Sort of it's the passing of the throne. He's, he's building and building. Yeah, as we're going through the agenda, I realized he was taking the lead on. You know, hey, Jay, your mic is live. Most of the items. <laughs>
Uh, we're gonna do. We're gonna count down from five here, so we can sync up our our big TV audience. Five, four, three, two, one. Good evening and welcome to the April 2nd, 2018 meeting of the Town of Scarborough Planning Board. Would you please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. Mr. Dupree? Here. Ms. Hendrickson? Here. Ms. Saunders? Here. Mr. Fellows? Here. Mr. McGee? Here. Mr. Bealey? Here. And Ms. Oglis? Here. Thank you. We could have a full house. And uh, just a note for the record, um, Ms. Oglis is now first alternate, and Ms. Hendrickson is a voting member. So congratulations. Uh, next item, approval of minutes. We have um, a few sets of minutes to potentially approve February 20th, 2018, March 6th, 2018, and March 12th, 2018. I move to approve the minutes of February 20th, March 6th, and March 12th. Second. Second. Any discussion? As usual, I have a couple updates. All right. Um, with respect to the March 12th minutes under item number five, uh, I just wanted to amend my uh, input that ecological studies are part of due diligence for the Verizon mobile site. And item number eight, that uh, the reason for my vote in opposition was uh, due to off-site impacts. And on the March 6th um, uh, meeting, that uh, there was a note that curb and gutter approach in the crossroads holdings was not considered low impact development. And that a request for a layer showing protected natural resources was, was um, requested that wasn't uh, in there. And I believe that was it. Thank you. Thank you. I'll, uh, I'll uh, amend my motion to include the comments from Ms. Saunders. Thank you. Thank you. Any second. Further? Do I have a second for that? Second. Thank you. Any further discussion? All in favor? That's unanimous. Thank you. Item number four, Ashley and Alexandra Holdings, LLC, requests a sketch plan review for 690 U.S. Route 1, Assessor's Map U30, Lot 12. Jamel? All right, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, just a reminder that the sketch plan is an opportunity for an informal discussion between the board and the applicant prior to a formal site plan review application. So, uh, applicants in front of the board uh, for a 10,000 square for a sketch sketch plan review for a 10,000 square foot building uh, to include restaurants and personal services, located at 690 Route One in the TBC zoning district. <coughs> One of the primary issues or concerns staff has is uh, access management along Route 1. Uh, it's a fast moving part of the corridor with a high, high traffic volumes. Uh, so staff notes that there's an opportunity for potentially for a connection to the old Blue Point Road uh, to alleviate traffic entering and exiting onto Route 1. Uh, it's important that the development create an alternative and or uh, attractive and vibrant streetscape along Route 1 and adhere to the town's design standards. Uh, staff suggests the construction of a sidewalk along Route 1 to support the town's efforts to provide more pedestrian infrastructure along Route 1. Uh, buffering and screening to abutting properties is important as abutting properties are uh, residential, at least on one side. Uh, suggests that the applicant meet with the town engineer to discuss the proposed stormwater management infrastructure. And also a suggestion that the applicant meet with the fire department <coughs> to discuss fire suppression and truck access prior to site plan submission. And we did uh, want to note that we received one public comment for the project uh, thus far, and that is included in the board's packet. And typically, um, there isn't any public comment during the sketch plan phase of the project, but with, there will be an opportunity for public comment during the formal site plan review process. I'll turn it back over to you. Thanks, Jamel, and I'll just echo that, that we, we did all receive that uh, written correspondence, um, and we will have the opportunity for public comment uh, as this proposal moves forward. Um, with that, I'll turn it over to the applicant. Good evening. Mr. Chairman, members of the Planning Board and staff, my name is Ashley Loren Kerr. I'm a resident of Eagle's Nest Drive in Scarborough. 
And I founded my fashion business here in Scarborough eight years ago, located at 674 US Route 1. My offices and showroom are just a few lots down. Um, it's on the north corner of Old Blue Point Road. Um, just a few lots south is the project I'm here to propose. My sister Alexandra, who's sitting here, she is also building a home which is near to completion on Jasper Street. Um, so she will soon be a resident of Scarrow as well. My sister and I started to purchase property uh, about three to four years ago. Uh, the first lot was the long lot that you see um, behind the lots on Route 1. Um, all of them are in the TVC3 zone and the plan is to develop a mixed use space. It was then when we began this project after meeting in January of 2015 with former town planner Dan Bacon and Karen Martin, the executive director at SEDCO. It was our dream to work to develop and continue contri to contribute to the revitalization of Dunstan. We are excited to bring a new and attractive, professionally planned, community-minded, clean space to the town of Scarborough. This new space that we named Old Blue Point Crossing is a mixed use project that fits in the description of the TVC3 district. It serves primarily the local market and follows in the opening wording of the TVC3 town and village fringe district purpose statement, which states it provides areas for quote, service and community uses. It goes on to say that these uses are primarily serving the local market and convenience and needs of town residents. The goal of this district is to supplement the TVC district in encouraging the creation and persistence of Scarborough's town and village centers with development at a scale and uses at an intensity which are compatible with surrounding areas. I do believe we have achieved this. This project meets all criterias of the TVC3 zone and all its permitted uses like restaurants and personal services. This project complements the neighborhood by featuring two restaurants, a barber shop and nail salon, all of which are family run, local and give a neighborhood feel. We carefully added two open patio spaces to each side of the building with walkways that go around the patio so that each restaurant would have an open air and outdoor space to enrich the community feel and bring people together. Based on the initial feedback we received, we also added two bike racks and plans for a sidewalk in front in hopes to connect the sidewalk at the corner of Old Blue Point Road and the Scarborough Salco line in the future. We have worked with our site planner, Will Conway, at Sebago Technics, architect Andy Highland at Port City Architecture, and structural designer Glenn Smith to bring a modern yet classic building design. We wanted a building that fits in with the look of the area and complements this zoning district. This design includes attention to details reflected in the large and inviting modern glass windows, doors, stonework, and seasonal interest landscaping. As a designer, I paid very careful attention and thought to design details allowing for superior quality of maintenance, cleanliness, and landscaping that will look presentable during all seasons of the year. My family and I are very proud to present this project to the town of Scarborough. My team and I look forward to working with the planning board and the staff. Thank you. Can I connect now, Jamel? Good to go. Okay, I see it on my screen, but I don't see it on your screen. I have IT support on the way. Oh, right. maybe. Yeah, yeah. Let's 
It's usually. I'm not sure. Oh, here we go. Yeah. Thank you, Andy. You're welcome. Uh, I'm Will Conway. I'm a landscape architect with Sebago Technics. I'm much better at that than I am at this. And uh, these, these are great clients. Uh, they're local, uh, attention to detail, and uh, they really want to do a nice job. So it, it's a pleasure to work with them. And it's a pleasure to be back before you. So um, this is uh, on, the, on the screen. Uh, this is the site. This is Route 1. This is the proposed building. Uh, there's two restaurants sort of on each end of the building. And I'll show you a, an ex, uh, expanded slide of the um, patio areas and the frontage along Route 1 as well. Um, the parking areas um, are located in the front of the building. As you know, the zoning restricts uh, the building to be a maximum of 70 feet back from Route 1, which is where we're at with a uh, drive aisle and a single row of parking along the front, because that's what really retail, uh, retailers are really looking for. Then there's a one-way drive around the southern edge of the building, uh, and then the balance of the parking is here. And then this area here is for a service area, deliveries, and some uh, staff parking here. There will be um, a dumpster, uh, four dumpsters with a screen fence on three sides located here. And then in this area of the site will be the stormwater management ponds. Uh, this site is in the uh, watershed of the Scarborough River. The project is <clears throat> a little less than two acres of impervious, so we will be required to uh, submit and receive a stormwater management permit from the main DEP. Uh, we met with them this morning, and we're close to filing our submission uh, with them. <clears throat> uh, in terms of curb appeal, so this is the uh, an enlargement of the Route One frontage. There, Andy will show you there's a, um, a, an arcade, if you will, or space under a canopy here along the front walkway. And then right here and right here will be um, outdoor patios with tables. Uh, there'll be a nice uh, low wrought iron uh, metal fence to sort of separate uh, pedestrian circulation, which will go on the around. So if you're parking here, you'd walk around that to here. The bicycle racks will be placed here and here. And then it's not shown on this drawing, but, uh, and Jamel mentioned it in his comments, when we submit the site plan, we will be adding a sidewalk along Route 1, and it'll connect across uh, right here and tie into the uh, handicap stripe aisle, which will be extended across here. So there'll be a connection from Route 1 into the site. And um, all of the utilities for the project will be underground. Um, and there will be very uh, little intrusion on uh, Route 1 traffic during installation. The sewer and water are very close to this side, so there will be very little encroachment into Route 1. The power and cable is on the opposite side, but we're going to be boring under Route 1 rather than uh, cutting and trenching it. So there will be very, very little disruption to traffic um, as a result of that. So that is our site plan, and I'll turn it over to Andy Highland for uh, architecture, then we'll close and open it to any questions you may have. You want to unplug? Yeah.
Well said. I'm Andy Highland with Fort City Architecture in Portland. Uh, so we're the architects of the uh, project. Uh, I think Ashley mentions uh, the uh, it's it's a uh, multi-use development. Uh, they have it. I think they're in negotiations with most of the leases. Uh, so we're looking right now. We're also kind of looking at some of the uh, tenant fit-ups uh, as well as we as we look here or as we move forward. On each end, as you see here, we have a restaurant. I think there's probably going to be about four. There'll be two restaurants, nail salon, <coughs> and a barber shop, which are all great services. I think for this kind of for this area. Uh, on uh, there's a covered arcade on the front, uh, so an eight-foot covered arcade signage is incorporated into the architecture itself. I've got some gooseneck lamps and some other uh, just uh, small LED lamps on some of the <coughs> flat portions. Probably this piece of signage right here, I think that'll probably go away at the, if uh, this tenant's going to take, I think, both of these or this uh, whole spot here. The other thing that we were trying to do, and I think uh, trying to really incorporate in this, is get some outdoor uh, eating space. This is uh, one of the restaurants on one of the ends. So if we come in the front door, and then there'll be a door in the side and, and some nice uh, outdoor uh, uh, eating spots, probably some umbrellas, things like that in it. Uh, taking a look around the other side, same kind of similar uh, piece, another restaurant in the end uh, with a kind of private uh, uh, eating area on the side. Uh, the landscape there, area will be in front here. I think uh, Will's plan probably showed it more. This is just kind of our first sketch up model, but there'll be some flowering plants, uh, some treescape in the front. The other thing that we've done in the model and uh, in the design of the building is we take, we, it's something that we do often, we kind of take the front of the, of the gable roof here, drop it down three or four feet and put the uh, uh, rooftop units uh, in the back. So it will drain in this center section right here be in kind of an enclosed area, a little recess in the top, and that whole recess will just go ahead and drain off the back. So the, any kind of mechanical equipment will be completely shielded from the street, uh, and, uh, and that gives them the opportunity. Uh, their, their Energy Star units, that'll uh, each one will kind of uh, take care of the tenant that's, uh, that's below, so it's uh, pretty convenient. Uh, this is the rear of it, again, just kind of service doors. There's a couple of uh, uh, kind of private areas that we didn't show in here yet, uh, just uh, outdoor uh, storage for the corner tenants. And then uh, there's uh, also some uh, dumpsters kind of in a screened area in the very back. That will be back in this kind of corner right in here. So that's, uh, that's the look. We're trying to kind of make it you know, traditional main looking, uh, you know, building and uh, materials are uh, hardy plank, so cementitious siding, some stone work on the uh, base of the piers and the base of the building and, uh, and asphalt shingles and, uh, and, and regular trim on it. Okay. So any, we'll here for any questions. All right. Did you have anything in, in closing or? Well set. Great. Thank you. Appreciate the overview. Uh, we'll turn to board discussion. Robin, would you like to start? Sure. Off? Sure, sure. So I'm not the architecture expert, but it sure looks nice. Um, the first question I have is whether or not you, anyone has spoken with the Scarborough Sanitation District. Um, a lot of these uses in here are, are very, like, highly water dependent kind of a thing so I'm just wondering if anyone has has coordinated with the Scarborough Sanitary District my name is George Kerr I did uh, have a discussion with David Hughes Great. and found out what the assessment would be kind of a little shocking but uh, he didn't indicate that there was any issues at all uh, but I did meet with uh, staff and so plenty and of capacity in that area, kind of a thing. Plenty of capacity in that yeah, area to yes, be connected to not an issue to the sewer. Great, not an issue. Um, <clears throat> so I'm wondering about the. I think Will, you mentioned that it was in the Scarborough River watershed. 
So it's actually across the street from the Phillipsburg watershed, it seems like, or just, just a ways away. So, um, so you're outside of sort of urban impaired stream area, but I'm wondering what your stormwater approach will be for managing um, water locally and minimizing offsite runoff. Okay, so um, we're going to comply with uh, Maine DEP Chapter 500, and our BMP is going to be two soil underdrain filters, and we'll be handling. Um, 95% of the impervious area and 80% of the developed area okay. in those ponds. And so you're proposing standard curb and gutter type type work or is will there be any catch basins? There will be, be directed? not a ton. There's probably six or seven catch basins Okay. Uh, within the parking areas and then they all discharge to the rear of the property. Okay. So they'll discharge through the underdrain soil filters? Yes. Okay. Um, I guess I share staff's concern about traffic as well. And um, well, before we get to there, I guess what are the um, what are the recommendations for visual bu buffers along the boundaries and abutting properties? Has so the property to, to the north, uh, the property to the north, mm -hmm. uh, there's a current six foot stockade fence along the property line and some mature arborvitaes along mm -hmm. a portion of it. Okay. And we're proposing that that would establish the buffer to the north. And the buffer to the south is a friendly neighbor, and um, we don't propose any buffering. Uh, and that is also the TVC extends southerly of this property. Mm -hmm. All right. And so I guess uh, what are the how amenable is? Um, I noticed that you have a connection to Old Blue Point Road. In the back, the back. Could there be a back connection to Blue Point Road to alleviate some of the traffic issues? Um, <clears throat> the answer to that question is a little complicated. Um, just to take a few minutes, when I <clears throat> began to purchase some of this property. Uh, gentleman that was living there was very old mm -hmm. and uh, funny I just left them today because I do check on them and um, it wasn't my plan currently to put a road through there can I yes I own the property uh, I do have uh, an idea with my daughter that we we're going to do phase two mm -hmm. I, I did not want to put that road through right now um, just because of my relationship with Dick uh, uh, Buckley. And um, I'm sure that if I went back to him and said, you know, Dick, I'd like to put the road in, he'd say, sure, you know. But uh, it was not my intention uh, to address that at this point uh, in the project. OK, so I guess my question is to staff then at, well, no. You're moving forward with traffic analysis and the like. I, as well. I would. I had talked earlier with Jamal, uh -huh. and uh, I want to touch all bases. Uh, my daughters are putting a lot of effort into developing mm. this project, and I want to do it right. I think we can make a large impact uh, within that area, so that other people will continue to move on. I, I did that in Old Orchard Beach uh, when we started the revitalization back in 1987. I was on a council at the time and I appointed my wife as uh, the co-chair. And a lot happened in Old Orchard Beach and I think this is a good time. My daughters live here and uh, they can make an impact in that area and continue what the town has been working on for quite a bit of time in developing a mixed use for this area. I think this fits in and we were more than willing to meet with the police department to try to address some of those issues and should the issue <coughs> to put a road in to come out the old Blue Point Road, that would be something I would have to do. Mm -hmm. I guess um, I guess I'm just wondering about a traffic analysis plan if you're gonna move forward with, with getting a DOT permit and the like because I you know, well, just yeah. okay. Yeah, that's Excellent. all part of the application. Good, good. Good. Yes, yes. So you're not looking for waivers or anything like that because oh, I no. just feel like um, Speaking of Old Orchard, I just had to go to Old Orchard Beach today for my day job, and part of the issue down there is that left-hand turning lane. 
you know, where people are in the middle of the lane and they turn left. So it's kind of a high crash area. So, so I guess at this point, I'd be interested in seeing what the traffic analysis comes out with. I, I can I can tell you that uh, <laughs> my daughters are, are like me. Whatever it takes, we want to get it done. We want to work with your staff, the planning board, and the police department, the fire department, and develop something that we can all be proud of. Thank so you so much. Thank you. I'm good. Thanks, Ron. <clears throat> Rachel? Yeah, um, let me uh, follow up a little bit on, on what uh, Robin was asking because I had some of the similar questions and my ears perked up when you said phase two. Um, is fa could you tell us what you mean by phase two, what you're, what you're thinking? Yeah, um, possibly, well, I'd like to put um, the intent when we started this project was to take my daughter's company and uh, develop a, a large building so that, because she's not just a, she's international and she does a lot of traveling and her products have been selling very good all over the world and we want to bring that back to Scarborough. So my phase two was to acquire uh, and build another building and then at that point I would use the Blue Point Road to exit. Um, I think it's a, it's a good opportunity um, to develop this area in the likes of what the town has been looking for for Dunstan area. And if we could plant the seed and make the tree grow and that whole area be developed and improved to satisfy the needs of the community, I think we'd like to be a major player in that. I'm, I'm familiar with your daughter's very excellent reputation and I appreciate her being here in Scarborough and, and her business here as well. Um, maybe you could help me as I, as I look at this, is there more to the property that you own than what we see here? Because I, I'm not clear where. Uh, yeah, that's it. Okay. Uh, I own a portion where uh, Dick Buckley lives, which comes out onto the old Blue Point Road. I believe there's a house there and a garage that I think is shown on one of the plans. It's 200 foot frontage along old Blue, old Blue Point Road. And I would probably put a building in that area. All right, so you do believe this, this space on the site for a second? Oh, yes, oh, okay. yes, oh, yes. But I, I, I was having difficulty imagining another, no, another building here. No, no, not, it, would, it would not be interfering with the current structure. I own quite a bit of other land that abuts Old Blue Point Road. Okay. Um, let and me. That, and that would be basically like my daughter is currently on uh, Route 1 now in the pink building. The only thing that would probably be different is the area would be a little larger. We had talked about doing photo, her photo shoots with the town of Scarborough rather than you having to go to New York, Atlanta, and Miami. We would bring the people here to do photo shoots. Uh, I think it's a good opportunity, uh, not only for my daughter, but also to promote Scarborough. I mean, I've got a project that I'm doing called Sea Ridge, and it's worked out very nicely. And uh, what I told the staff then, Four years ago, five years ago, when I started the project, I stuck with it. I don't deviate. Uh, I've been on many boards, and uh, I, I want to not only appease what we're trying to do, but work with you. And the minute Jamal had mentioned about a sidewalk and a bike rack, instantaneously it was part of the plan. Right, thank you. Um, let me just, uh, again, get a little more information. Uh, the, the patios that you have for, uh, for the restaurants, are they going to be full service? There's uh, going to be exit doors from the restaurants, or is it just people can take their food out and sit in those patios? So right across the street from here, um, there's a building that has a restaurant in it. That was the building that I had suggested to Andy and to Will and everybody on my team that we really, I love the look of that. I thought it was very modern and I liked how they had a patio out front. Um, what I tried to do a little bit differently was put the patio on the sides so it wasn't as loud for the people that are sitting there enjoying themselves. It was really, this building, I really wanted it to be very community minded. 
I wanted people to be able to, you know, pull in, invite their friends to come over, and just hang out. It wasn't about just eating and leaving. You know, it was, a, it was about a space that you could really enjoy, and that's why we designed it with the patios on the side, so it was a little bit more quiet and relaxing. And we put the walkways around because I, I did hope to have um, the servers be able to bring the food out just like they do here across the street um, and really promote that really relaxing atmosphere when you're dining. We need more of that in Scarborough. <laughs> Well, as you, as you go forward with this, can consider the access to the patio. Uh, is it going to be from the building? The access will be from the side glass door. Okay. Um, maybe I can turn this around to show you. Yeah, I, can, I, can, I can see a small glass. Yep, small so it'll, it'll be from the building, and then you can only enter onto that side patio from inside oh, the restaurant. Right. That was, that and was then I, put the, I, put, I wanted the walkway around so that it was very accessible for people and it wasn't interfering you know, with back and forth with the, what's on the patio and what's on the walkway. Right. Um, I would suggest that you just consider how wide the walkway is on the outside of the patio. You don't want people all of a sudden necessarily single file walking past the patio. It, it, six as you, feet. Six it's six feet, feet okay. there. Um, and then I had a, another suggestion as I'm looking at this. Uh, you had indicated that the roadway to the south was one way. Um, around the side of the building past the patio, you are going to really have to consider how you're going to put the directional signs in there because people pulling into the front, if those front parking spaces stay, when they pull out, where are they going to go? They're going to, yeah. they're going to try to immediately head to Route 1. Um, and it's likely that it would be best if they're directed around the side of the building. So just consider what sort of directional indicators you would have to create a, an easier traffic flow. That issue was a major issue for my daughters. When we, prior to me purchasing another parcel of land that was owned by Mr. Purvis, mm -hmm. it was a dead end. And Michelle uh, from State Farm has been very supportive of this project for the past three years the south side which I didn't want to use an easement so I turned around and my daughters and I decided we'd buy Mr. Purvis's property move the building over so there'd be a drive around but I do understand what you're saying we will address that either through markings on the tar or signage but the whole purpose is not to run into a dead end we wanted them to be able to come back around correct uh, very good I, I think there's a lot of good thought that's going into this. I think um, the architecture looks looks fine. I think there still are some questions um, that I would be interested in as, as you go forward uh, in terms of um, additional screening from the street, in terms of the landscaping. Uh, we do ask as much as possible that the parking be on the side and the back of the building, although we do allow uh, under, the, <coughs> under the codes uh, for one row of parking in the front. But if there is that one row of parking and in the front, it really needs to be. And, and Rachel, just so you know, what really is in the front is mostly the, just the handicap parking. Um, if you notice, there's four spaces in the front and there's only a couple extra spaces in the front. Um, we did that because one of the major reasons why I have such a large overhang um, is it's sort of disappointing to go to a space like this and it's raining or it's snowing and you are getting out of your van with a handicap chair and you're getting really, you know, wet or from the snow. So we wanted to have that nice overhang um, so that, you know, people were able to be more comfortable out there. So I, I said, I, I really do believe there's been a lot of special thought that's gone into this. Um, the restaurants that you're talking about, are they going to be seasonal, year-round? Do you have a sense of hours? Um, they are going to be year-round businesses. Um, both tenants currently operate um, as a local business, um, as a family-run business. I don't, I really think that when you find out who the restaurants are, I think you're going to be extremely impressed with who we have. Very strong local businesses that have really great reputations. Uh, and the hours? I don't believe that 
they're going to be open anytime, probably past 10 or 11 o'clock. Um, most of them, one of them's open, I think, to about 10 or 11 o'clock now, operating in Scarborough. Um, so I don't think you guys are going to be disappointed with anything regarding operating hours. In fact, they're both very community-minded um, restaurants that will serve all age groups. Right, thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Rick? I think um, what you presented for a sketch plan is really good. Um, I think the way you laid out the planning, the um, parking is nice. I like the angle parking on the side. Um, I don't really have a lot of questions at this point. Um, maybe for so there you go. Oh, wait a minute. Where'd he go? I think it's. Uh, when you come across the road with the power, do you know where you're going to put the, you're probably going to put the transformer out front there? It'll be in the rear of the building. Oh, you're going to bring it all the way to the rear? Yeah. Oh, nice. Okay. That's good. No shrubs within 15 feet? No. Not for the power company. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I think it looks good. Okay. Thanks, Chris. Nick? <clears throat> Thank you. Um, <clears throat> yeah, can I echo some of what's already been said? Kind of rehash it. I, I think the traffic study is probably going to be the most interest to me on this, um, especially with the Route One access point. And I think you know, it's tough at this point seeing a drawing. You don't have a whole lot of dimensions, but if you look at the picture, it almost appears that a car turning in. It's probably first instinct is to go right, just kind of hook right around, right, to get to the front of the building. So that's probably a natural reaction for most people. So my my concern in a setup like that would actually be set kind of a stacking. So if somebody in one of the handicapped spots is in reverse at the same time that somebody's coming around that corner, all of a sudden they've hit the brakes because they've been traveling at 40 miles an hour, if we're lucky, down Route 1 going north. And the car behind them has also decided they want to go to the same restaurant because they just saw the sign. You know, and now we've got a, a situation where there's some quick stops that can cascade back into Route 1. So. I think, you know, kind of paying attention to that, you know, and maybe you do have the, the appropriate amount of width here where that, um, you know, somebody parked in that first handicap spot can back out and not cause a stacking issue, but that's something that I'd, you know, I'd be curious to see and along with the traffic report. And then, um, as well as maybe, I, are you planning to restrict left turns out of the site on Route 1? No. No, so it would be, is it one, just one lane that can go left or right yeah. on the right side? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, you know, that's probably something to consider as well, whether or not, you know, your patrons are going to find that convenient or maybe put most of them just give up, take a right, and find their next U-turn point. But um, outside of that, it's a nice design. And uh, <coughs> quick question. Was that just space down on the bottom? Did you say that was in a garage? The, uh, on the little stub out of land? He has, a, he has a small shed on the side. It's a shed. Yeah, there's a shed and there's a house. And then uh, snow storage. Um, and you have a lot of spots there and a kind of a small buffer zone between you and the neighbor where you're gonna where you're gonna position some of that snow off of those side that side parking area. Yeah, so that'll note that as well. We'll right. show that on our okay. whole site plan. And then um, I, I agree, I think buffering is going to be important with your side neighbors, especially with outdoor dining facilities, traffic and all of that. I think you know, substantial buffering will be not only the right thing to do, but uh, probably um, required here. So uh, good luck. Thank you. Thanks, Dave. Roger. Uh, uh, just a few questions. Um, did you, uh, when you uh, decided on that entrance right there on the, um, as you're facing it on the left, did you ever uh, think about having a center entrance? Was that not a consideration at all? In other words, going right into the, you know what I mean? Well, it's funny. Uh, after seeing what you had been working on and approved in the past and looking at the layout, we thought maybe this would be the best site, but uh, Again, uh, originally we had it in the middle, and we thought it would, what are people going to go left or right? So that's why we kind of moved it to where it is. And, you know, with the police department or somebody with throughout DOT, if they make a recommendation, we're not immune to that. But through our dialogue amongst ourselves, we thought that that would be the least impact 
that's why we chose that spot. Okay. Um, now, I was just thinking of people going in, they're obviously going to see that first restaurant, you know, that's going to be exposed more, and the outside seating will be expo exposed more also to more traffic than the other restaurant on the other end. Uh, so just, just a thought, you know, I don't, you know, I, it doesn't matter to me one way or the other, it's just, I just wonder why you, why you selected that. Um, just, just for my reference, um, you, you purchased a, apparently quite a bit of land around there. So it's all, all the land right here and, and what we see here, that's it? Or do you have other parcels? That's it. Because it, it, I um, own a lot of property on the other side where my 671, 672 and all that, all the way down up to Church Street. Is that the rose colored building you're talking about? Yes. Okay. I, that was I'm the original. I'm in the pink building on the corner 674. Okay, and that that is on That's the other. That's next to Bad Dog Deli on the on the south side, side right? Right. Point, yeah. What was what was here before? Nothing was there except for Mr. Purvis's um, land there. But to the right of Mr. Purvis, where you see this building would be, it was absolutely nothing but overgrown trees, shrubs, weeds. Okay. Um, then the only other thing I wanted to ask you is, uh, in the staff reports, there, there was a reference to some off-street parking. You, you, don't, you don't anticipate you're going to be, there's going to be any off-street parking involved no. in this? Okay. And everything, the way it's set up right now, it's going to be all one way, going around, looping around the building? Yes, sir, Roger, yes. When you come in through the driveway, you can either go left and park, or if you want to go right, if you're handicapped, you can pull in. Or if you continue to go down, you'll go by State Farm, make a left, and there's parking all along there, or come back around and park on the other side. Then you'd make the exit the same way you came in. Okay. Um, no, I, I, th I think it looks, the building looks really nice, and uh, I think it would be a nice addition down there as well. So uh, as long as you abide by all these. <laughs> and, and I really, we went through them many times, and I really didn't feel like we have. Um, originally, when I met with Jay, I had had a bridal store interested in moving in. And after meeting with Jay and, and explaining to the ordinance, you know, I really found that that wasn't a good fit um, because it would have been over the 1,000 square feet that's allowed for retail. So rather than confusing anybody, I took retail completely out um, and I just focused on restaurants and personal services that I thought would enhance the south side of Scarborough, which I spend all my time in. Um, you'll see me, my car is parked in front of every single day um, when I'm not traveling. So I do spend a lot of time down there, and there is a need for that. Um, and you know, even when I have clients coming in internationally, it's really hard to, to find a, a place to eat without going really far. There's not much down that side. Um, you know, and my friend, Mr. Chamberlain, he's doing a great job a little bit further down improving that area. Um, and I just think that this is going to be a really added benefit for everything that's down on that side. And, you know, we're trying to make the Dunstan area um, look a little nicer, and, and this is this is our um, contribution. Okay. Roger, if I could just sure. answer one of your questions. When we really, when we started this project, and again, it's taken so a little time to get to this point, and we couldn't be here without the staff, and in the interaction with them and, and the people that we brought on board. The ordinance wasn't conducive for us to do the second floor because originally we had designed a two-story building. But because you can't extract the elevator and the stairwells from the uh, 10,000 square foot, we couldn't do a second floor because you destroyed the whole first floor. So that's why there is plan, There is a, a another plan phase two that we would like to address, but not at this time. So I do want you to know our intent was to make it a two-story building. But when we started extracting the elevators and the stairwells and stuff, there was no, no room left on the first floor. I'm all set. Thanks, Roger. Susan? Um, I'm sure it's going to turn out to be just fine. I'm going to hold back a lot of enthusiasm until we see the traffic report 
because this I, I know enough about this part of Scarborough to know that what you see now is not what you're going to be seeing in another five to six years. <coughs> you know, we got to we got to plan this intersection based not on today but on you know the future. And if we can make everybody happy with the traffic report, then I don't have any real serious problems. Um, looking forward to seeing some elevations. Um, I think that when we get to that point, we're going to want to talk to you a little more about the space between the building and Route 1. Not that we're not doing no, this is fine, but we'll bump it a little bit. And the buffering to your neighbors is very important, and said before. Okay? Thank you. Thanks, Susan. Susan yeah, uh, Susan, Susan, if I may, I've, I do want you to know I did go to the neighbors personally and let them know what was going on. It's okay. And it's okay. That's very important yeah. from my perspective, even the ones across the street and stuff. And. Uh, Again, I, Michelle from State Farm is uh, very enthusiastic. Everybody has a different reason when a double helper comes in and tries to improve something. But we're very eager to move forward, work with this, the board and your staff, along with the state if, in the police department and the fire department, to do something that we can all be very proud of. We've taken the initial step, and I can only tell you on behalf of my two daughters and my family, we want to uh, continue this process and get to the end of the journey and have a nice ribbon cutting. All right. Thank you. Yeah, I, uh, my fellow board members have covered things pretty well. I think this is a pretty strong sketch plan submission. Um, I think you're on the right track on, on all fronts. Um, as others have noted, traffic study will be, will be a big uh, X factor and we'll look forward to seeing what that says about uh, entering, exiting, you know, left turns out of there, uh, the stacking, potential stacking concern that Mr. McGee mentioned that we've seen with some other projects. Um, I think the architecture looks promising, uh, both in terms of the overall aesthetic, but also, you know, uh, considerations like uh, kind of hiding the mechanicals um, behind the roof line, uh, which is something we, we look for and appreciate. Um, so again, I think that's all on the, on the right track. Stormwater will um, see how that unfolds we appreciate the, the glimpse at that and where that is going um, kind of piggybacking briefly on what Ms. Agla said about wanting to make sure we're, we're planning and anticipating um, and thinking about the future um, the uh, that, that applies obviously to the <coughs> but also to the buffering and you know there's a mention of a you know the friendly southern neighbor which is great but um, you know you never know what <coughs> What will happen down the road in terms of properties changing hands and so forth, and so I would just I would just throw out there that we we'll want to make we we'll want to make sure that there's some still some consideration given to to good screening and buffering there. And then my final my final thought, um, kind of thinking ahead to the possibility down the road of there being another phase that would potentially connect out to Old Blue Point, would be that um, when you're thinking about your site design for this phase, this current phase, including the circulation and how you're placing your parking and landscaping at that that corner of the property that um, gives some thought to how that could potentially be connected down the road so that you're not having to go back and, and uh, you know, reinvent the wheel there. So um, with that, I, I think um, we'll just look forward to, to seeing the next phase of things and um, appreciate the introduction. Thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you all very much. Item number five, Prompto Oil Inc. requests site plan review for 318 U.S. Route 1, map U40, lot four. No, would you like to intro this one? Sure, thank you. As uh, Mr. Chair indicated, this is uh, there in front of the board for a Prompto oil change facility at 318 Route 1 in the B3 zone, uh, a small portion of the parcels in the stream overlay district as well. Um, so staff has received several submissions for this project, staff and board. Um, it hasn't been heard by the board yet because it has been tabled due to our busy agendas, 
Um, but the applicant has addressed the suite of staff comments leading up to this submission and has um, changed the plans accordingly. Uh, tonight, the primary issue of concern is the site access onto Route 1. Uh, our public safety departments, along with our traffic engineer, continue to have concerns related to vehicles leaving the site and crossing travel lanes to the left-hand turn lane on Route 1. Uh, Staff has asked the applicant to provide an alternative site design that moves the driveway further west or southbound along Route 1. Um, and the board should be ready to discuss this design and whether they are comfortable with the alternative design that was provided in your packets. Uh, in addition, the applicant has been asked to conduct a traffic count at a local Prompto facility uh, to verify the vehicle trips at the site and to help verify the traffic impact fees for the project. Uh, the signage plans um, still need to be finalized. Um, they, a draft was provided, but they need to be finalized and refined. Uh, and staff has questions also about the building elevations and their coordination with the site renderings that were provided. Uh, and finally, the proposed landscaping and buffering along Route 1 should, should be an important discussion topic as well. So I'll turn it back to you. Thanks, Jamel. And I'll hand, hand it back to the applicant. And Glad test, to see test. you back. Hi, how are you doing? Can you hear me okay? Yes. All right. Sean Frank with Sebago Technics is supposed to make this presentation, um, but I asked him if I could talk briefly just to get started because I'm, I work for the applicant, Propto, and you know we've revised this site now three or four times for, for the town of Scarborough, and while you folks have not seen it, um, every time this happens, I spend another $10,000. So my first shot at this site was about 10 years ago, and after spending about $20,000, the ZBA threw me out of town. So we're back again, and I feel like I'm going to catch 22. And I just want to say what I really liked about this site here, and when the entrance was way over here, was that there was this is a, a fairly fast-moving traffic, 45, 50 miles an hour, and there's trees here and buildings here, and there's kind of a curve here, and for them to see me and get here, they've got to slow down and make that turn into the property. And so then they come back around here, then they go back out, nice and smooth. It works out great. Now we want to be in the town of Scarborough. We're desperate to be in the town of Scarborough, okay? Um, the site plan that, the alternate site plan that they're talking about, and I want, that's what I wanted to mention. In my mind, there's a balance. There's a balance between safety for my customers and safety for people off the site. And I, what I'm trying to do is explain my concept of the balance. So this traffic coming up here, if I move the entrance all the way to the other side of the site, what I do is I create a speed problem. There's poor visibility. The, it's going to be hard for customers to come in, come in here. I run the risk of people, in this case, trying to make that turn as people are trying to turn out. I've got now cross traffic on the inside of the site which is crossing back and forth. And to me, I'm not even sure I can get a fire truck on this site yet. They're still working on that, but I'm sure we'll work it out. All I'm saying is, from my perspective, this site plan is not an easily workable site plan. And so we may have to table it again tonight, midstream, but we're looking for your judgment to kind of give us kind of an opinion as to where we are. Now, my understanding is there's a left turn road over here that goes lane that goes onto a dead end road and I can't understand why anybody coming out of this site there's probably about a few hundred people that live there which means I might see them once a year on, on, on the average and I'm not going to see those people very often and so the question is the concern is people want to go into that left turn lane to make a new illegal u-turn you don't want them to make so it's like the further I get away from that U-turn, the more incentive there is for people to make that illegal U-turn. So I was better off with the site plan here with the entrance there. Now that being said, I don't know if I'm complaining. I'm, sh I'm showing my frustration. We think this is the correct site plan. But if you turn me down, I'm done for a year. Jeff loses his, his ability to sell the property. He's got to find somebody else. And it, to me, I'm looking for your judgment to balance out the police concerns and the concerns 
of somebody coming out of here, going, trying to cross track at some weird angle where they're gonna, they might get hit trying to do something that's illegal. So it's like, my job is to make this site smooth. The police job is to enforce and make sure that the roads are safe. I understand that dynamic. And I know you've got a tough job. We're looking for somewhere in the middle of this meeting today, this discussion, for you to say, hey, Kevin, you better table it because we're going to reject you and throw you out. So that Jeff does, still has a chance of getting his sale. He's been having his poor property on, under contract now for nine months. He's been very patient with us. We keep asking for more and more extensions. Technically, my contract expires April 15th or something like that. And we don't, Jeff hasn't promised me he's going to extend it. From a practical point of view, we're kind of married and stuck together. So maybe he will, maybe he won't. Um, what we'd like you to do is give us some input. We'd like to be here in Scarborough. It's your turn. <laughs> Thank you, Kevin. Uh, Sean Frank with Sebago Technics. Good evening, everybody. I asked you about that badly lying with me as well. I'm not going to have him actually uh, present anything, but he is my traffic engineer in case you have any specific questions. Uh, obviously, the whole discussion has always come up with, at this point in time, is access from Route 1. Uh, as you may recall, initially there's a curb cut right here, right now. My initial design with you folks, and my initial sketch plan with you, was to utilize that curb cut uh, and to direct everything. The building itself is over here just because, obviously, you know, this is where the, the bigger building area is. It tightens up pretty hard in through here, and obviously the site uh, narrows up as you get up through here. So from the building standpoint, we are almost uh, on this side. Uh, so, you know, <coughs> Again, at that point, we had an existing curb cut here. We thought, geez, that made sense. It looked like everything was set up for us to work that out, and we went there. Uh, the issue, as I understood it at that point in time, uh, from the traffic review that we had had and the discussions I had with staff was the fact that they wanted to make sure uh, that we weren't, again, at this point, just having somebody come direct across towards this island so they were basically cockeyed, if you will, uh, with the back of their vehicle uh, hanging out into the northbound lane uh, if they were trying to take this left coming out. Uh, so we actually moved this down twice, 20 feet and then another 20 feet, so it's actually 40 feet down um, from where it was originally that you folks first saw, saw at, the, uh, at the sketch plan. And what we did try to provide uh, in association with that was that, you know, a vehicle coming out uh, certainly could uh, get into that left turn lane, that they could, you know, easily get in and turn or get into this lane so that they were aligned, so that the through traffic was still going through and still have ample time to take the left or the illegal U-turn that they were. Uh, talking to the traffic engineer, his concern still is that 45 degree, you know, that coming straight across and through there. Um, so that, that's why they're kind of saying to get us uh, over here to the full island. Um, as Kevin stated, uh, obviously we do have some, you know, uh, again, design issues associated with that. Uh, obviously we, we, we don't like to have this cross traffic associated with that. Uh, obviously, again, a few folks are telling me that uh, that's the way we have to go, then uh, uh, we'll, we'll have another discussion regarding that. Uh, just getting into uh, uh, some of Jamel's specific comments, if I could, just while we're here at the same time. Uh, we did provide the perspective associated with it. I think there was a comment regarding some additional landscaping within this area. Uh, we'd be more than happy to add some landscaping there. Uh, there's always been some conversation about uh, this area and through here, which again, from the site plan perspective. is uh, right along this edge. Here's the end of the gate, uh, the, uh, uh, the, yeah, yeah, okay. The, uh, the edge of the uh, the existing uh, I can read it. Yeah, the guardrail. That's the word I was looking for. I was doing real well. Uh, the existing guardrail right here. Obviously, the grade gets a little steeper up on. We're actually starting the construction right on the other side of that right of way. Obviously, we can't put landscape within the right of way. So what we had was, uh, you know, a nice landscape in, in this area and through here, but again, just to the fact due to the grade associated with the, uh, the treatment pond, uh, we weren't proposing any landscaping behind that uh, area of the God Grill. Again, if that's an issue, we'd certainly be happy to have that conversation. Uh, the sign, uh, I don't know the specifics. I think in terms of these, uh, these bits and characters, uh, I think we provided uh, the board with uh, the typical sign, if you will. I think one of the other comments specifically was, um, 
to uh, add the uh, address to that. We'd be more than happy to do that. And I don't know if maybe what we have is just at this point in time uh, too many characters on that. But again, if that's what it is, uh, certainly we'd be happy to uh, you know work out those final things with staff as well. Um, I think the real issue really does come down to uh, to the access at, at the end of the day. Again, we thought, you know, by sliding this down through here, providing uh, that ample, ample turn to allow them to get into that left turn lane if, in fact, they were going there, especially based upon the number of trips uh, we anticipated going through there. Again, our thoughts always been, um, you know, it's local traffic. Uh, people don't come from a long ways away if you go to get an oil change. An oil change is always going to be from people in Scarborough who do know Scarborough. Uh, and understand the road network. So uh, uh, we didn't see that as a, as a big uh, uh, vehicle maneuver area, if you will. Uh, and again, we thought by giving them enough area uh, to allow that turn to work, it still allowed us ample queuing space on site so that the site was working with the roadway network as well. Um, but again, we certainly appreciate uh, uh, comments back from the board. Uh, with that, Mr. Chairman, I'll conclude my presentation again. So to me, Brad and Kevin, to help me do our best to answer any questions the board has. Thank you, Sean. Um, before we go to board discussion, we do have the opportunity for public comment. If there is anyone here uh, from the general public who has anything to say, right. just introduce yourself. Uh, good evening. My name is Larry Howell. I live at Ant Nine Puritan Drive. I have my uh, stepdaughter that lives on Millbrook, which is the street across the, the way there in that left turn. Uh, there can't be more than like 10 houses up in there. Is very, and there's a Seaport Credit Union. So there's not a lot of traffic, in my experience over the last 10 years, making that turn. Um, so I don't see that as a, a, an issue as far as the local traffic is concerned. I certainly, um, kudos to you for coming up here and speaking your, your mind and what you need to do. As a business person, you just can't wait five years and you, you know, time is money and money is time. Um, and as far as entrance onto Route 1, Route 1 is Route 1. I mean, we've got a gazillion, we've got traffic on Route 1. It's just like the earlier presentation or, or any of the businesses that are open now. Uh, traffic is a problem, and pulling in and out of Route 1 is a problem. Um, I, hope, uh, I hope you guys can see, see to it to, to, to make this work for us. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else? All right, thank you very much. Um, Nick, thank you. go first. Well. Hi, Nick. How you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Let's start with just the alternate plan, because you know I'm going to ask about it. So my, the, when I first saw it, my first question was, why don't they try to shift the building? And, and I think you kind of gave me a, a part of the answer, which is you have a building envelope issue. It, it really is. It's just too tight here. Again, as you remember from the site plan, it, you know, the, here's the wide part. The, building, the, the site just gets thinner as we work our way back up towards Route 1. So the, the building envelope, and even outside of the building envelope, the area in terms of the maneuver around the building, if you will, gets smaller and smaller as we work our way down to that side. So there's no real way to shift that building to the right side of that and create that turnaround towards the underside. Explain that well. Yeah. Well, if you can you see, it, the furthest I could right. probably right. shift this is, you know, I could probably shift it to about here. That's about as far as you can get it. Yes, in terms of setbacks. getting that building in there. Because you can see, here's the setback line right here. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's on there. Did I get that in my packet? I remember seeing it. We didn't get those in the packets, did we? I, I, I kind of, we I kind of played know. with this particular one here. I think I did have an alternative one in terms of uh, showing that into there. I thought I had my building setbacks on there, but I might not have. <laughs> I did have the building envelope shown on those alternative ones that I did, that alternative layout that I did provide. Quite a slot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
I think the issue is that the dashed lines are there, they're just not labeled. You sort of have to toggle between the alternative plans and the site plan to. Okay. Thank you. That's a. Right, that's the that's the, that's why it looks different. Yeah, and it does look different because the, the, one, I, the one I provided you was the car's going the other direction. Yes. All right. So which is the alternate alternate plan? Well, when I provided this, and we started looking at it, we thought, well, geez, maybe it made more sense if you will, because obviously, I can only slide this down so far. You know, we certainly don't want to have vehicles backing out onto Route 1. I mean, right. I think that we'll all agree that's the last thing we want to have is queued vehicles in the lane than Route 1. So that's when we came up, or again, as we've been working on this, obviously, since we've been starting to see some of the comments, that's why we kind of started looking at this one, um, where we would, you know, try to utilize, if you will, the additional pavement we have here from a queuing space uh, and to bring them back out again. It's six and one half dozen of another. I mean, you know, the building I think pretty much is pretty close where it winds up to be. It's just that we were thinking if we reverse the flow of traffic, that gave us a little bit more of the cube. Okay. But again, as we were looking at this, you know, our issues are uh, number one, the first one that you have as part of your package. Yeah, I'm. You know, I'm, I, here's here's where I, you know, I do feel that concern, which is you get a traffic engineer that is really not recommending um, that you go with the, the proposed entrance plan, right? And because of that, he's, I mean, he flat out says, I don't recommend it. <laughs> and of course, I understand that coming forward, that, you know, that that was going to be the first comment I was going to hear, and, and I appreciate that. I truly do. Uh, and, and that's that puts us in a tough spot because we've got to and it does to put you folks in a tough spot and and I, and I understand that it's just I I do feel a little bit to be perfectly honest with you is that you know we're trying to uh, design a parking lot for Christmas you know we're okay uh, for a couple of weeks a year you need all this parking you know is that what you designed for um, in this particular case I just don't see I, I don't see that traffic maneuver as a is a is a a major maneuver coming out of this site. Um, is the potential there? Certainly, I suppose that someone's going uh, to pull that move and, and you know just go direct angle over to that spot. That's where uh, that's where Mr. Bray's uh, concern was. Um, it, and I can't sit here and say that you know there's not a possibility someone comes out of that driveway and just wants to go right for that edge at an angle. But um, you know, I really it's sometimes just hard to design against stupid. <clears throat> well said. <laughs> <laughs> so I. Um, you know, that be, I don't, I don't know what else to say to this at this point because I've got a traffic engineer that doesn't quite like it. I personally, um, it, I'm, I agree with Frank, you can't fix, you can't, you can't engineer for stupid. And you hope people use caution and they, they use judgment. Um, but I feel like we have a paid professional that is telling us this is not advisable. And, and at the end of the day, you know, I feel like I'm in a tough spot here. So, but I appreciate your efforts and, uh, you know, the, the alternate plan didn't really do much for me either, so I'm all set. Thanks, Nick. Rachel, did you have something? Yeah, I, I did because, and I, now I'm feeling rather stupid, but I, I do need your help, Sean. When, when you're talking about the plans or in part of the narrative, you talked about this as the mirror version. Yes. Uh, Except that when you do a mirror version, you really flip things. So why did you not move the building closer to Route 1? Here's our setback line right here. Okay, so that is... Okay, so we have the setback from Route 1, the front setback. This is that dash mm -hmm. line here. And then here's the dash line off the back. Okay, so that's all I'm saying is here's where the area was, you know, in terms of being able to fit our building was, we're, we're pretty limited, if you will, here. I mean, obviously, I don't think pushing it back towards no brook is anyone's concern. The idea would be is to try to push it, I guess, further down this way. Um, and obviously, it doesn't, I run out of room real quick. In terms yeah, of so, so the setback is how many feet? Uh, I don't want to misspeak. Mm -hmm. I have it on this other plan here, I'm sure. The front yard setback is 35 feet. 35. He has the property there, right? the mm -hmm. right of way line. Okay. Okay, and here is the 35 foot setback. That's the other hash line. 
and the uh, if you could tell me what all three you've got three lines there this is a this is the uh, the buffer requirement in terms of the okay. landscape buffer so it's property line okay uh, landscape buffer in terms of so you can see that's where the parking has mm -hmm. to end in this case and building setback so yeah, I'm sorry. I, I probably should have been a little bit more clear associated with all that because uh, you know I think Jay hit it right on the head in terms of that I you know we did have it labeled on the um, on the site plan and, and I probably should have relabeled it here on some of these other blow ups. So again, prop, the right of way line again, and you can see this angles down quite a bit real quickly. That's where uh, the DOT took some and did when they put that big culvert in underneath Route One associated with uh, the Millbrook. So uh, obviously they took a, a piece of land on through here rather than just running this way. So here's the, the right of way line uh, between Route 1 and the private property. Uh, 15 feet for a landscape buffer, uh, 35 feet for front building setback. Phil, it's a good idea at the time. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Do you have anything else while you're at it? No. no. Okay, thank you. Robin? There's no way you can make modifications to the building to make it less, uh, how about turning it sideways? We tried that. Yeah, that was, uh, again, you need to come up to the podium. Both the sideways is number one is trying to make the traffic work, obviously, and number two is, you know, facing the overhead doors right towards Route 1. How about having two bays instead of three bays? Oops. Testing. Oh, it works. Okay. Sorry. Go ahead. Making it two bays instead of three bays. I know you don't do that, but maybe that's what you have to do to do business in Scarborough. Well, and no, what the problem? I don't know. I'm sorry. Um, because the building's mechanical, doors go up, doors go down. The third bay is really a spare bay. And the spare bay is there when the doors break, the springs break, so we still have two bays. And if we have a car like a Land Rover with three skid plates, which is going to take 25 or 30 minutes, we just put the cone out and jump bays over. So we operate with three bays. It's the way we operate. So no, we, we can't do two bays. And um, I'm not sure if we're, we're designing for Christmas just to pull out, but I guess what, I what I'm concerned about with this alternate plan is the stacking issue that we were just talking about with the last property. Well, um, Because this would be, I've, I've been to Prompto on a Saturday morning when all of us are trying to get our oil this, changed. This stacking here won't work. We wouldn't do that. Right. I won't build that building. Oops. Thank you for This stacking here by moving a third row here and striping further back does give us enough stack. And so your only concern there is the fact that the person pulling out has to maneuver, go in front of that that incoming path. Well, once again, I don't know whether or not they haven't done it yet. Let's see if that works. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't know if they've done it yet. I don't know if a fire truck can get here, get here, turn around, come back out. We're not sure this is like even going to work. So we haven't gone there. So, this crossover doesn't seem like a big issue, maybe, mm -hmm. okay, but trust me, if somebody's coming off this road here and they're not slowing down and somebody's here, mm -hmm. there's going to be an accident. My other problem is people slowing down all of a sudden coming past those trees, turning in, they slam on their brakes or they hit their brakes and somebody gets <coughs> in the rear end. To me, there's bigger traffic problems here than there is up here because what you're saying, and I don't, I'm not going to use the same word, but a customer, that, there aren't enough people living down this road for anybody to want to turn left. The only reason that left exists there is for the few residents that there. Right, but we have to think about the future, and we have a very large, you know, amount of development coming in the future in that area. So. In an average hour, mm -hmm. because we do three, you know, three cars, or six, up to six cars per bay per hour. We're expecting to do about 80 cars an hour. That means, or 80 cars a day. So that means that your average person is going to come out of here about once every six or seven minutes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, we're, you know, if somebody pulls out here and goes across the lane, there's not going to be any stacking problems because we don't have enough traffic to do that. Mm -hmm. So, that our concern is that what you tell me to do is what we'll do. Sure. And you know, my concern continues to be. I I saw somewhere in here that. Um, you're able to build right up against the wetland, and so maybe Sean, you could talk to us about natural resource 
NERPA concerns because I was I was seeing that grading was going r right up to the wetland in this area. I think it was just, I think it was just one spot, as I recall. Uh, and, and so, talk to me about what permitting you're getting for that, because it's my understanding that um, DEP requires you to protected resources has at least a 25 foot setback. Uh, from so a I stream, think, not from a wetland. From a wetland, yeah. You should talk to Artie, Artie Arbo at DEP. Well, again, I do have a, I have a, I have a PBR for the project as in the grading plan that was originally proposed. We're actually, we were closer to the wetland, you may recall, and actually okay. had more of a wetland impact associated okay. with it. I'm got, just concerned that it's more than just traffic that's geometrically um, not consistent or incongruent with this parcel. I think we did a good job actually with the grading plan. Now we actually did move the building closer to Route One. As you remember, we had much more extensive retaining walls when we were first talking to you folks at, at, at Sketch Plan. Uh, we pulled the grading back away from the stream. Uh, we do have some minor wetland. I think the wetland impacts associated with this, but like 25 or 30 square feet altogether. I think that was our total wetland impact and that was associated with that swale uh, that's coming off from Route One. Staff, do you know what the what setback is from a wetland? What Audi Arbo definitely usually does? I, I'm sorry. <laughs> Can I chime in? Um, I think what it, what he, Sean's referring to, though, is his permit by rule is, is where they need to be to get that close to the wetland. And that's where he's, he's talking about his wetland fill and, and what thresholds he triggers. Okay. Is the permitting, the, it's just a permit by rule. Oh, okay. Got it. It's a conundrum. I know. I hate to fill. I really. I don't. I hate to put you. I, I hate to put you in this uncomfortable situation. I really do. Um, again, uh, we just don't see the number of trips that would be that it's creating this this dangerous situation. We just don't see the number of trips doing that. We truly don't. Um, and we do see that. You know. Hopefully, uh, most people are. <laughs> Sane enough, if you will, that you know, if you can make that turn and get in that lane because you want to go left, that you can, you can do it. Um, and you know, and to just say that you know, no, you can't have the driveway there at all because there's a chance that some idiot is going to come at an angle at 45 degrees across and 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 and, and have the back of his vehicle in the passing lane. It's just uh, you know, um, again, we understand. And obviously, we do a lot of reviews with Mr. Bray, and we certainly have all the respect in the world for him and his opinion. Um, uh, but again, just based upon the number of, of vehicles we see coming out of this driveway that may go up there and try to take that left, we just didn't see it from your intuition. You've articulated your position. I apologize. Very well. <laughs> Thank you. I, I do. Yeah, I'm going to, um, you know, I don't usually say too much, but I'm going to articulate it again, okay? Because some of this technical stuff makes me a little crazy in that. There are 10 houses across that street. That means, how many? For now. Okay. I'll allow you that. <laughs> but there are 10 people that can make that turn legally to go down there that live there. Now there's other people visiting, right? Everybody else is breaking the law that makes that U-turn. Everybody else that approaches that intersection at an angle to make an easier U-turn is breaking the law. So are we going to move this driveway and reconstruct this whole thing to accommodate people that are breaking the law? I don't, I don't think that's a good idea. Um, and it concerns me that we even consider that. But I understand the police department had some notes, so that, you know, that has some weight. But I think that the 10 people that live down that street also have to be getting the oil change to be coming out of there, right? So the 10 people that are going to make that left coming out of Prompto have to be getting their oil changed. So what are the chances? I mean, I get my oil changed well. I don't change it as much as I should, so I'm not a good example. <laughs> but I think that moving the driveway and rearranging this traffic um, and my main concern with traffic even if i even if i didn't go about the left hand turn lane 
would be moving that driveway further down to where the oncoming traffic is going to see that entrance at the last minute, potentially realize, oh shoot, there's Prompto. Now I got to turn around. Now he's making an illegal U-turn on Route One to come back to Prompto. It just it it frustrates me a little bit that um, we accommodate people that are doing something that they shouldn't be doing. Now, if you're in there getting your oil changed and you do live down that street and you're going to make that turn legally, then um, from the sketch that I saw, you can cross the road and get in line without having to come across that bank. So, sorry, I didn't mean to, I didn't mean no, to continue right. that conversation, but I wanted to take that five minutes and, and say my, my thoughts. I haven't heard from you, so that's, um, that's Yeah, that's so. That's, that's my thoughts on moving the driveway. And Mr. Chairman, and the only, and I do know we talk about the future, and I will say divided highways, to me, are not the future. I think you see divided highways are being eliminated, and I think they've been eliminated right here within Route 1. So my thought is, to be honest with you, if any rework goes down on Route 1 within this area, the chances are we're going to lose that divided highway at some point. So from a future standpoint, what we'll probably have is that center left turn lane, and then all of a sudden, you know, the issues we're talking about, well, aren't the issues anymore, but I agree the issue is there today. The, the divided island, the divided highway is there today. But well, my feeling is when, whatever, at some point in the future, when some rework goes on Route 1 down through there, there won't be a divided highway anymore. You just don't see divided highways as part of new construction these days. Thank you. Roger. Um, the divided highway is the problem. Um, and if I recall, <coughs> when they widened Route 1, between Oak Hill and you know, like Main Med, uh, I think the I, the goal was to eventually get rid of that island, but it just never happened. But right now, if somebody is heading south on Route One and they want to go in here, they literally have to go down and make the reverse turn, I believe, down by the Enterprise Business Park, and come back, don't they? Yes, they, they do. do. Okay. Yes. And if I recall, before. They changed the um, design at Bessie Commons. I think that was a reverse turn right there. Is, is that right? I'm not listening. Okay. <laughs> There's a reverse curve at. Uh, I think there was. It's <laughs> not a reverse it's not curve a at Scarborough Downs, and there's a re or I think, well, at least you can turn there, but I don't want to say reverse curve. But again, if you go up two lights uh, going north, uh, obviously you can pull into the bats and you know, and you can take that left to turn around there. I think there used to be a true reverse turn I think at, it was at, where, Bessie, where the veteran's home is. But that is not a real true reverse turn right now. It's, it's more of a sharp angle. But anyways, so you've got a problem with people heading south to get in there. And I tend to agree with Rick that, um, well, I'm, I'm not sure if I agree with you, but you I can agree with me. That's good. I like that. <laughs> but, but I think your original plan it probably makes more sense because I, I do think eventually that island's going to have to come out because it creates too many other problems for other businesses along the way down there. And uh, I, I guess that's going to be a state issue or something like that. But um, I mean, anything that goes in there is going to be confronted with the same problem. Um, I don't know what we what the problem is with U-turns we have up here. I was just down in Florida and they have U-turns everywhere. Um, so um, I I tend to I would go with your first proposal, you know, instead of this this last one here. Um, that's my position, anyways. The only other comment I would have is on the and I don't know if you'll even get to this point but on the sign. You know the, the roadside sign. Uh, you have a pylon sign, and when I looked at your your uh, visuals here, it looks like the pylon sign would be actually hidden by the trees. So I was just going to recommend you might consider a lower, like a monument sign or something like that, if you ever get to that point. <laughs> I I I'd just like to re recall that the the sign has to actually be 15 feet off Ooh. from the right of way line. Okay. So a low sign, you really wouldn't see that. Oh, okay then. Okay. Um, yes. Actually, just a point of clarification. We do have 
variable sign setback. So sort of lower, smaller signs can be within five feet of the right of way. And then there's another step to 10 feet. And then finally, the third step to 15. So just. There you go. See, I learn something new every day. <laughs> I'll see you always when I talk to Jay. <laughs> uh, so, so I guess um, I think that's all I have. Um, but it is that that island does create a conundrum for uh, you. So um, I'm all done. Thanks, Susan. <laughs> I just feel so old. <laughs> we every once in a while we get one of these. We're putting a square peg in a round hole, and we insist that we're going to be able to do it. And you know, I mean, we probably can do it. But from the standpoint of planning, it's not planning. It really isn't planning. There really is very little that that lot has going for it for anybody to do anything except maybe a massage therapist or something. I don't know. But, I mean, I've been the person who said no any number of times based on traffic, based on too close to the road. This has got. I mean, I'm not trying to pick on the developer because I really understand why this may look like a really good location, but we spent a lot of time trying to figure out how to make a silk purse out of a sow's ear here tonight, and I don't think that we got very far. I don't think it matters which one of those, which, which one of those um, designs that you pick. It's going to be a problem, no matter which way it comes down. My only real concern is the, is the um, signage, and that's because I'm looking at the, what's in front of you, Sean, and it's got signage that is very old and would not be meeting our yeah, standards. Right. Just want to point that out. And um, we'll see. I have nothing to say. <laughs> Whatever. Thank you. Um, yeah, this is a tough one, conundrum, as a couple of others have said. and. Um, yeah, anytime we're, we're, anytime we're uh, having to think about third-party expert opinions or recommendations, uh, anytime there's public safety involved, it, it, it's, it's tough. It's one thing when you're talking about the, the expert being someone who's talking to you about, um, you know, water, which is serious enough in its own right, but when you're talking about public safety and traffic, it's something else. Um, you know, I definitely remember, and I think Susan and I were both on the board when we ended up voting down a project based largely on traffic concerns. That was a, pro that was a, that was a project where there actually was, um, the traffic engineer said, oh, you know, we think it could work, but just based on sort of local knowledge and the intensity of the proposed use at that time, we ended up not approving the project. The, and the intensity of use to me is really the big difference in this case. Well, one, it's one big difference. The, the intensity of the use, or I would, what I at least feel is a relatively non-intensive use, at least compared to something like a drive through restaurant or some of the other things that you potentially see and that we do see along Route 1. Um, and it's also the nature, of the, the nature of the stretch of Route 1 and the fact that it's not right next to an intersection and things like that. So I'm really torn on it. I'm, from what we've seen about the alternative scenario, it doesn't necessarily seem like a magic bullet. And I don't know, I, I fully appreciate the applicant's desire to not get just rejected tonight. And I, I think we all appreciate the implications of that. Um, but I don't know if the, you know, if the votes are not here tonight, and in a minute I'd like to ask my fellow voting board members for a sense of have a recap of where they are based on the discussion tonight, but I guess I'd, I'd appreciate a sense from the, the applicants team, then maybe maybe staff if I could as well as the sort of, if we were to table this and say we're, we don't think we can, we don't think we're comfortable going against the, the traffic engineer and the, and the police recommendations, or, and we just generally don't feel good about the that access plan as proposed currently, what's the likelihood that you can go back and look and find some version of that 
flipped scenario that's going to work. Well, obviously, we'll do our best, and certainly we'll, we'll ask Jamel and Jay to, uh, you know, hopefully get uh, the police chief and uh, and Bill, and hopefully we can all get in a room uh, over the Angela, and, uh, you know, yeah. hopefully between all of our heads, see if we can come up with something that we can all agree on, and hopefully bring that back to the board and see if it's something we can get you to agree to. I mean, we, it's, you know, sometimes there's a little bit of a, a little bit of a misperception. I mean, we are a planning board. We're not an economic development <clears throat> commission. We're not responsible for bringing business to Scarborough and promoting business in Scarborough. At the same time, I think it's accurate to say we do appreciate uh, the need to be reasonably business friendly and to, to use kind of common sense. And we don't want to be impose onerous requirements and be arbitrary and cause applicants to have to spend thousands of extra dollars just so we can see four versions of the same plan. Um, but I, I would hope that you also appreciate from, from our perspective that some of these things have been going on and we appreciate the burden and the, and the work that that has entailed, but some of these scenarios and discussions have been going on sort of invisible to us because we haven't, you haven't been before the board uh, just because of the way the agenda has worked out. So we're sort of, this is the first time we've had the opportunity to sit together as a board and kind of digest this collectively and, and have these conversations. So hope you can appreciate the We do appreciate it. And well. if nothing else, Mr. Chairman, that's why we wanted to be here tonight, yeah. okay? Because I think it is important for us as the applicant, if nothing else, uh, and, and probably as, as well as for staff to see, you know, where, where the board is on this. Um, so obviously we can make some decisions uh, one way or the other going right. forward. So we certainly appreciate the time of the board. So, I, uh, you know, I do think that it has been worthwhile, even if, you know, if at the end of the day we're, we're, we're back to the drawing board to a certain degree. But at least I think it's, it, we needed to hear this from the board, I think, at least to get some type of consensus or at least thoughts from where the boards are at this point. Thank you. So on that note, and I don't want to belabor or stretch things out too much, we still have a pretty full agenda left tonight. If we could just quickly recap. Nick, you sounded like you were a... A no based on the current yeah uh, current. and that kills me because that's not how I want to see this town operate I think this the first time I've ever had to say no to a project but based on some of the uh, feedback we're getting I mean I wish I don't know if there's a way to give you know how much how many feet do you need off your setback 10 feet you need an extra 10 feet you know I wish there was a way to kind of work that out and if there was or if there is a way that somehow comes to fruition I really hope it comes back Thank you. But no, right at this current state. Thanks. Roger? I would be a yes. Okay, thanks. Robin? Um, yeah, I guess I'd want two pieces of information because <clears throat> I'm with Nick. I'm, I'm inclined to listen to the traffic expert. Um, um, but the two pieces of information that I would like is, is perhaps from uh, the, cap the town's capital improvement plan or and or transportation committee insights as to when uh, if at all that median will be taken down in the in uh, that part part of route one um, That would weigh into my decision and then um, Is a waiver or some type of ZBA appeal uh, to move the building within that uh, or to move the building envelope even an option So those are the two pieces of information that I guess I would okay. Be interested in thanks Rachel yeah, I would like to, I, I would be interested in knowing if moving the building envelope is, is an option. Um, that might uh, allow the entrance, I keep looking at that, it looks like a whale, but the, the entrance uh, further, <laughs> further south. <laughs> um, I, on the other hand, I'm also, um, I've been, I won't say entirely persuaded, but certainly swayed by the comments about the uh, small number of people living on the other side who would, of uh, route one that would, might be interested in, in that turn uh, coming out of the, um, coming out of the facility. And I, I think that's a persuasive argument. Um, It could be a yes. Thank you. Um, yeah, I mean, I agree. Those are those are compelling arguments. I, I guess, given everything that we've talked about and all the input that we've gotten from various sources, I I would probably come down on wanting to 
see the applicant go back and see what they can do with that other scenario, work with staff. Um, staff can also provide some of the information that has been requested. And hopefully we can, hopefully we can get to, to yes. Um, and that's probably not the thing you most want to be here tonight, but at least it's not a, at least it's not a, a no vote. Um, and I, I'm reasonably confident based on past experience that, that, um, that there's a way that, that it can be figured out. Well, again, we appreciate so, the time of the board tonight, Mr. Chairman. Uh, 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 based upon that discussion, I guess that the applicant would request that uh, the board table uh, uh, for the discussion of this, uh, this item this evening. And uh, Yeah, I mean, we don't need to take any particular action to do that. Um, but by not acting, it will just be uh, carried forward to the next agenda provided the applicant wants to keep going. Well, again, thank you for your time and your attention. We appreciate right. it. Thank you. <coughs> Good night. Development LLC requests an amended subdivision and site plan approval for lot 118 South Village Assessor's Map R73, lot 139. Is that right? Yeah, lot 139. Jamel, would you like to? That's going to be Jay. Oh, Jay. Yep, I'm going to take right. this one since uh, there's a bit of history with little, this one. A little retro. Yep, we've been, been through a number of different iterations. And as you just know, there's really two distinct requests being made um, by the applicant tonight. We have a subdivision amendment um, as well as a site plan amendment. And so I'm just going to sort of touch on both of those moving forward um, at the outset, but I think it'd be, we hope, behoove the board as we've done previously to sort of take the subdivision question up first and then assuming you approve that move to the site plan question um, and so the distinctions are as you just noted the, the site plan is for one of the lots the multi the remit uh, one of the multi-family lots in the subdivision um, and the applicant re pre uh, received approval for that just about a year ago I think it was December 2016 so a little more than a year or so ago um, and so at this point, what the applicants are really looking for in the subdivision amendment are a couple of what I would consider modest modifications given the scope of the project. One is to, to divide a current single family lot, uh, to create a, uh, to maintain the, a single family lot, but also create a new cottage lot. Um, board members may re recall cottage lots are allowed with units under 750 square feet or less and they count as a half a unit. Um, so that's a housing type that, that's allowed in the subdivision. They're also looking to reconfigure one of the existing approved townhouses. Uh, it actually eliminates two of the units in the townhouse. The, the building and the structure will take up the same area, but the lot lines adjust. Um, so um, that's an, another item that's being proposed. Um, there's a, modifications to the boundary line of 118. And then I'd say sort of the most consequential, if you will, from staff's perspective anyway, is the applicant's request to modify their approach to affordable housing. As planning board members may recall, this application or the subdivision has density bonuses of a, uh, uh, requires 13 affordable housing units to be built. And the proposal had been to build three well, I should say to build six units, which would account towards three of the affordable housing units within the multifamily development on lot 118. Um, the applicants sort of looked at their numbers or whatever their, their rationale, but is now proposing to rather than build affordable housing units to pay an in lieu fee, which is permissible in the zoning. It uh, needs to be approved by the planning board. Um, 
So rather than, again, building those units, they'll provide for three, four, three of the 13 affordable units um, in phase, I think it's 3A or whatever it is, um, uh, by paying the in lieu fee. So those are sort of the main elements to talk about there. Do you want me to jump into the site plan, or do you, do you want the board to sort of talk through subdivision and then circle back? What do you think is the easiest approach? Um, I would maybe ask the applicant how, he, how his presentation is organized. I, I don't want to. Yep. Yeah. Good evening, Kerry Anderson, Valentine Development. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm glad uh, we, we would like to talk about the subdivision for just a moment. We actually have an additional item that we'd like to talk about, and if the board would be willing to be amenable to the change, we have a Mylar with us tonight. I'd like to go through that if I could real quickly. About uh, 1 o'clock today, we became aware of an issue that existed between lots 114 and 115. And I can describe the issue that came up, and we have a solution for it. And I'd like to go through it, and again, if the board is okay with it. And we have a Mylar with us tonight that has the change reflected on it that we'd like to have signed. But if it's something that the board isn't comfortable with, then we also have the Mylar for everything that Jay's just described. So I'll put this up, and I can go through it. Okay, sure. Mr. Chair, just in the way of time interest, for what it's worth, if there's something new that the board's being asked to review and approve and sign on a subdivision that hasn't been noticed in part of the public record coming into the into tonight, I don't think the board could take action on that tonight. Certainly, something the board could at least cons you know weigh in on, uh, primarily. Uh, um, <laughs> Yeah, at the outset, <laughs> and sure. then uh, so I just want to sort of set the stage a little bit so that there aren't expectations for what the board should or shouldn't be doing tonight. Um, but if it's something the board's comfortable with, potentially it could be a consent item moving forward. Just another <coughs> way of sort of skinning the cat. But okay, thank you. And I don't want to take up any time. I realize there's other people here that are waiting. I'll just go through it quickly, and if sure. it's too much, then we certainly can come back another time. This plan you see before you is the 10th amended, and it is the recorded plan. It's the record. It's the plan of record now. We have a townhouse building up here. We have a couple of lots, and in between those lots, we have a pedestrian way that has an easement laid out over it, and one property line that separates those two lots. The intent was always to do the same thing on other townhouses that had similar situations. When we got this approved, this change was made. The only reason I can think of that we didn't have the change later on was because we didn't deal with these townhouses later on. This phase wasn't developed. But we have a situation now where we'd like to do the same thing, have one property line that goes down the center rather than two and have it essentially be a pedestrian, ease, pedestrian way with an easement over it, so it'd be the same situation here as there. And in a blown up version, this is, this is what it looks like. We're just, and this is what we have now. And then what we would do is we would create essentially the same situation we have here, over here. That's the change, but if that's something that by way of notifying publicly and giving the town planner and staff enough time to review that. We certainly understand it. Don't want to have that hold the application up. Okay. That's all. I'll just ask when we get to board discussion, if folks, if folks without spending too much time on it, just quickly weigh in on your leanings on that, and that could be carried forward. All right? Thank you. Thanks. Um, did you have your, did you want to go through the, uh, Finish introducing the subdivision. I've introduced proposal. the subdivision amendment. Okay. So the question is, do you want me to jump into the site plan, or should Mr. Anderson sort of go through subdivision components? Um, why don't you go ahead and, okay. and do site plan yeah. as well? Yeah. So you know, once, as I said, if the board's comfortable with the subdivision modifications, um, with the applicant, with the bulk of, I believe, the board's work will be tonight. It will be to look at. The amendment to uh, lot 118, which is the multifamily um, property, as already stated, sort of closer to uh, Eastern Road. 
the previous approval had seven um, residential lots, uh, sorry, buildings. Uh, the applicant has again looked at his program and has re redesigned this with six buildings. Overall, it's the same number of units. Originally, it was approved for 53 units. They are still proposing 53 units. However, the unit type has changed. Previously, there were a couple of two unit, I'm sorry, two bedroom units. Now, all these uh, units are one bedroom studio. We'll all count as sort of a half a unit per our residential density calculations, and I can dive into those weeds if anyone wants me to, but I don't think I'm going to do that right now. I should note that, uh, so this was on the uh, board's agenda previously. It was tabled due to lateness of the hour. Um, and we had some staff comments about site access that the applicant has made some adjustments to. And so we're, we're pretty pleased to see that. And I think that those are um, good, uh, uh, well thought out changes. I'd say the uh, other main element in terms of the site plan component is uh, the applicant is seeking the board's approval to allow for a reduction in parking. Typically, the parking standards we require for one bedroom units, one and a half parking spaces per unit, which would require 82 parking spaces to meet our minimum standards. The ordinance, the zoning ordinance, as well as site plan ordinance, does allow the board the authority to reduce the amount of parking if the applicant can demonstrate that they can carry on their business or what have you with lesser parking. However, what the applicant needs to do is demonstrate that a, the full complement of parking could be developed. So the applicant is proposing to actually build 70 parking spaces, but they're showing where 12 additional spaces could be accommodated at a future date if the board's comfortable with that approach. Um, so I think those are really the highlights. Again, we you know, have a number of other staffing comments. Oh, one other thing I did want to note, small circle here as a reminder, is um, we do just want to have a conversation with the applicant regarding the phasing plan and the, um, the development of the Eastern Trail connection out to Black Point Road. Just want to be sure that we have a good handle on when that's um, proposed to be built out, and I'm sure they'll answer that as we go through. So. With that, I think that's enough for me for now. Excuse me, did you say trail connection? <coughs> uh, East, the Eastern Trail, as okay. part of this project, they're developing a, a stretch of the Eastern Trail from basically the parking terminus, if yeah. you think of it, out to Black Point Road. And this phase of development really was building out from uh, really the intersection of Eastern Village with Eastern Road out to Black Point Road. There's another stretch of trail that is in a different phase, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so, Thank you. I'll hand it. Thank you, Mr. Yeah. Chairman. Steve Bushy with Stantec here on behalf of uh, Ballantyne uh, Development and Cary. Uh, in the interest of time, I'll just quickly go through. Jay has touched upon, I think, some of the key pieces before you. Here is the site plan. Has Jay just outlined six new buildings compared to the seven originally approved? Uh, basically, these two buildings here, each with six <coughs> units, were pretty reflective of the original approved design. These two buildings each have 12 uh, units in them. Previously, we had another building in here, so these buildings were configured a little differently in this location, in this location, and then there was a fifth building here. Then the sixth and seventh buildings originally were located here. Since we did away with this, we obviously now have the six <coughs> total buildings, 53 units, 49, one bedrooms, and four studios, as Jay had outlined. So that's one key change to this piece um, and to this site plan. Jay also just mentioned, though, uh, another key fundamental change about access into the property, and that is uh, prior to the last meeting, which uh, we were unable to present to you folks, staff had made a comment uh, about um, the connectivity here with a driveway that had been on our original submission uh, connecting to Federal Way. And the staff comment basically said, could you take a look at that uh, elimination of that driveway and let's just have two main driveways off of Richard's uh, way. So we talked about that and uh, subsequently made a new submission, which is basically part of what we're seeking approval for tonight. And that does away with that driveway piece. Fundamentally, uh, pro from my perspective, one of the bigger 
improvements from that uh, elimination, driveway elimination, is that I think it really cleans up the access here and the crossing point for the Eastern Trail. So that uh, Eastern Trail connection that was just uh, discussed here a moment ago about connecting the trail onwards here, kind of going uh, easterly over towards Black Point Road, this is a fundamental piece of the project that will be constructed to uh, make that last connection over to uh, the Black Point Road and have a you know connectivity <coughs> piece. Ultimately, once the trail gets uh, completed by the Eastern Trail Management District in the, in the town, putting the bridge over the Spurwink River and then crossing over Pleasant Hill Road, uh, my gosh, that'll be an unbelievable piece of trail infrastructure connecting basically from Bug Light in South Portland all the way down to, I believe, Kenny Bunk or even further south, so it, you know, it's going to be a tremendous piece. This is obviously one uh, uh, important little link to that. Uh, the distance to that, what is it, 700 feet, I think, Carrie, 700 or 800 feet, and Carrie can speak uh, in a moment to exactly when that's going to get constructed, but that was the, the element that was discussed. So then in eliminating the driveway connection here, one thing that we did add to provide a better circulation pattern uh, on a number of different levels, not only for the residents but uh, for emergency services and emergency vehicles is a, a little connection piece <coughs> here. Uh, does have some importance also to the point that Jay was referencing, referencing uh, about the future parking. We have 70 parking spaces, parking lot here, parking lot here. We also show 12 additional future parking spaces here that would get us to a total of 82 spaces ultimately. Our proposal and request though is for your approval and authorization simply to build the first 70 parking spaces and then upon a decision to be made perhaps by the code enforcement officer based on observations of uh, in overflowing uh, parking demand on the property, uh, the additional 12 spaces uh, might need to be constructed. But we're of the uh, belief that those spaces won't be warranted given uh, the trends in parking or uh, uh, vehicle ownership <coughs> and uh, the types of folks that we expect are going to be living in this uh, location and that 70 spaces for 53 units uh, should uh, be more than adequate to cover not only the occupants but uh, visitors and so forth. So that, that's our proposal and I hope that you folks will consider uh, that proposal similarly as we do. So uh, pretty basic uh, infrastructure beyond that. Uh, things that had been previously reviewed and approved, uh, sites served by water, sewer, uh, natural gas, uh, storm drainage. This is part of the broader drainage system going to a large wet pond on the property. Uh, one benefit of the new proposal, uh, the original proposal going back a year ago or more, had about a 69% impervious coverage and we've now reduced that down to about 55%. So. Uh, that's another plus benefit, so to speak, with regard to stormwater and the amount of runoff that would be produced by the development. So that's a good thing. <coughs> Staff comments included a few things on landscaping, and we did uh, provide some additional landscaping. We realized certainly a benefit by the elimination of the driveway here and the ability to put in a little sidewalk connection, but also a few trees and, and plantings. And we provided a few other plantings. Uh, I think the total count for trees here shown for and around the development, I think was 60 or 65. Uh, tree plantings, some deciduous, some evergreen trees and so forth, and uh, some rose bushes here along the, the trail connection piece. So uh, what our response to staff's comment on a couple of pieces about some plantings in and around the building is that we were seeking an objective for lawn area here for the benefit and use of the, the occupants and the folks who are going to live here. It's nice to have a lawn, a place to perhaps go out and at least throw a frisbee or you know, toss or something like that. So that's kind of our position on that, that we didn't really want to overwhelm uh, the interior area here too much with too many trees uh, to take away from the ability to, to have some lawn space to, you know, kick a ball or, or do whatever. So uh, that's, that was our response uh, in that regard. Staff also asked about... The building... For architecture, 
we presented previously, and I can let Kerry talk a little bit about his uh, objectives and, and goals here about uh, building texture and, and look and so forth. So I'll let him speak a little bit to the buildings, if you don't mind, Kerry. So we have one uh, distinct building amongst all of them, and that is the building with the green roof. It'll be a barn-style looking building. It's a certainly a very main vernacular. Um, and then the other buildings um, will be, they'll all be white clapboard. Um, and then the other buildings with the red roof, again, another main vernacular for architecture, white clapboard with red roofs. Uh, the trash building, uh, trash recycling building down there, red roof. Um, and uh, really just, uh, just clean. Uh, uh, windows will have uh, SDLs, uh, simulated divided lights on the outside. Um, just a really kind of federal style, clean, uh, main architectural look. Okay, yeah, so the, the other building down there at the bottom of G, right down there, that'll be a building which will kind of be a post office building. It'll hold uh, the mail and also packages, as I'm sure everybody's aware. There's a lot of online retailing going on now, and um, instead of having packages set by the door of whichever building that you occupy, there'll be a, a building that'll be a central place for packages, which we expect to be uh, every day. Uh, just a, a couple of closeout comments as well relating to uh, a few things that staff had uh, related to us and that is on the site lighting we provided a, uh, a lighting photometric sheet prepared by uh, Sweeney Lighting and the uh, fixtures uh, type that they had provided us from their perspective um, uh, the <laughs> staff had commented about uh, cutoff um, uh, definition and was a light a, a cutoff uh, fixture. Uh, Swaney Lighting provided some background on that, and I don't know a lot about uh, terminology nowadays uh, used for uh, fixtures and so forth, but Swaney assured me that the uh, particular light that we're uh, providing and, and proposing is one that is IES uh, a dark sky approved. So it's got uh, a rating of zero on the uplight uh, category, the terminology acronym. Bug, B-U-G, uh, backlight, uh, uplight, and uh, glare. And uh, the particular light fixture that we're proposing is one that is uh, qualifies uh, under the category of dark sky approved by the IES Society. So I felt that that was a reasonable uh, expression for site lighting. Uh, and, and I'm taking Swaney Lighting's word that what we're providing is one that would uh, more than satisfy the, the town's lighting ordinance. Um, another see, a couple of comments fire department uh, has reviewed and, and looked at and we've made a few uh, subtle adjustments to a couple of corners to assure that uh, they don't have any issue with their uh, fire apparatus uh, exiting and entering the site so on this corner and this corner we've uh, softened those by putting in some flush curbing at the at the radiuses that allow for those vehicles to turn uh, fairly easily and um, Beyond that, I think that covers the, the bulk of the issues. As I said, we are here uh, before you tonight seeking a site plan approval for this lot because Kerry is certainly uh, um, very interested and motivated to get started basically immediately on, on construction here. We've got an upcoming construction season and uh, his subcontracting forces are basically lined up on various jobs. So. Uh, he needs to get started with a certain crew soon because he's going to lose them to other projects if they don't get started. So that's why we're here, uh, principally seeking your approval. Now. With that, Mr. Chairman, I'll turn it back to the board. Thank you. And um, I'll throw it out there if there's any public comment <coughs> that opportunity. Seeing none, uh, Susan, do you have anything on this? I don't really, I mean, I'm, I have to take the opportunity to say that I'm a little concerned that yet again we're not getting any <clears throat> affordable housing being built. <clears throat> it, goes, it goes immediately to an opportunity to once again say 
and Scarborough is in the process of beginning its new comprehensive plan. The comprehensive plan must take a very assertive role in affordable housing because the way we've been looking at it to date has not worked at all. And I understand that I understand the applicant's desire to do it the way he wants to do it. But the town's got to get much more active than it has been in making sure that this doesn't happen again. The actual movement of the buildings around and so on, I'm sure Carrie's got it down, and I don't have any questions about it. Thank you. Thanks. I'll just go out of turn a little bit, at least for a moment, just to, to piggyback on the affordable housing comment. And I it's had some long meetings, and it's all kind of a blur, but I think I might have said during our last meeting when we had a, a, a similar discussion around affordable housing and, and an applicant making a payment in lieu of building, which they're entitled to under the ordinance, that um, I think I'd like, with so many, um, with, with so much of that happening, that it would be, uh, I think I'd appreciate having some kind of a regular update for the board periodically, every quarter or a couple times a year, whatever would be appropriate, just to give us a sense of what's happening with the with the with those funds and um, you know whether there are things in the pipeline just to hopefully give us a, a little bit more peace of mind that we're not just kind of completely kicking the can down the road I know there's some good people who are working on that but um, just wanted to put that out there but thanks <coughs> Roger. Um, I actually don't have any questions I'm all set. Okay. Nick and only one one comment which is I would prefer to see the, the parking built out and I think it just goes back to a kind of a practicality of it all which is you, you don't realize you have a parking problem until you fully stock these buildings with tenants and owners or whatever they're going to be and then you realize you have a parking problem and then with placing the burden on the code enforcement officer to come report to us to have report to the owner whether it be the current owner or maybe it's changed hands and there are new owners then they are you know, maybe propose to be in front of us again, and that by that time you've created a headache, you're going to create a secondary construction site down the road if we find that parking is inadequate on the site. So, you know, I kind of feel strongly that the parking should be built out to the minimum as required uh, by our standards, and that's that would be my only comment out of all of this, including the last minute change didn't even seem anything I was terribly concerned about. So, if it ends up on a consent item for the next one good by that but parking would be the one thing that stands out to me thanks thank you Robin yeah I completely second and echo what mr. McGee said that um, um, I also am in favor of the full 82 parking spots and not the, the reduced 70 what would be really exciting I, I feel like the, the applicant has gone so far as to say that, you know, they, they've actually reduced the amount of impervious cover. What would be great is maybe those um, parking spaces are um, on still um, pervious area and use either, either geogrids or some type of cellular, cellular technology in ground. Like I know, I think has been done before on your site. I'm not sure. But... Um, Regardless, I, I firmly believe that 82 spots are needed there as well, um, and I'm not inclined to reduce that to 70. I also want to understand why we have the steep slope issue in the stormwater um, management, both staff and um, Woodard and Curran um, mentioned that, so I'd want to make sure that that is addressed appropriately. Um, uh, but I'm I'm not opposed to the applicant paying the affordable housing in Luffy. Thank you, Rachel. Yeah, I also have um, a concern with the with the parking. Um, as I looked at at the response from the applicant, uh, there's clearly a willingness to address it if there is an issue arising. And the question that's such mushy sort of language. Mm -hmm. Um, how many, what's the trigger? How many complaints before something needs to happen? So to me, the way to take care of that is to have those 12 lots, uh, 12 spaces built out. Mm -hmm. um, I do have one observation now, and it's totally up to the, the uh, applicant to do that, but now that you have a little more lawn with a trail from uh, a walkway from the um, 
eastern trail uh, into the towards the parking lot you might want to consider put putting some fixed benches there so that that also creates an opportunity for folks to sit and meet and you you do have that sort of space there now thank you thank you <coughs> um carrie did you want to respond to any anything? yeah i mean we basically went around and did some counts of some recently built uh projects and we found being between 1.16 and I believe 1.29 spaces being occupied at uh, about one o'clock in the morning on a Thursday night. Um, but if the board wants 82 spaces, we'll build 82 spaces. We just believe that it's not going to be something that we'll need, but we're not, we don't want to haggle about it or, or have uh, code enforcement have to, you know, I mean, we'll just, if, if that's what the board wants, we'll build the 82 spaces. I appreciate that. Um, and I, I think that's where I'm coming down as well. And those who have been on the board with me know that I'm generally not. Right. Sorry. I thought you had your five minutes. I know what we all, all know what we all know what that. There's never, there's never any good material left for me. So. <laughs> I'm just going to say uh, everything that uh, everything that Nick said. <laughs> Do you have anything else? No. no. I just felt slight no one can. Um so yeah, just to pick up on that, and thank you. Um, I'm I'm generally not one who wants to push applicants to overbuild parking, um, but in this particular situation, given the configuration, and um, you know, it's not like sort of a, a restaurant or retail use where it's sort of you can just kind of reserve them off to the side, and it's it's. Uh, a little easier to go in and, and take care of it. And I generally do agree with the points about not wanting to put too much of a burden on code enforcement. So I appreciate Mr. Anderson's willingness to, to, uh, to uh, accommodate that. Um, I really don't have anything, anything uh, else to add at this point. I think it's all fairly straightforward and appreciate the comments that others have made. Did you have I do else? have, uh, I'd like to respond to Ms. Saunders' uh, comment about the pipe seat in this, and I apologize for not mentioning that. I knew there was something I just couldn't remember when I was uh, talking. Uh, the comments relate to basically two pipe connections for storm drainage that we have out into Richards Way. Storm drainage system that's already been installed in Richards Way is really deep. And uh, when we did the initial design, um, the last two pipe runs, we have two pipe connections into that. Uh, the designer put those, connected them basically to the existing pipe invert through the existing structures, which are like really deep, and it left those last two pipe runs at a really steep pitch. Uh, we're simply going to tie into the existing structures at a higher elevation to keep the pitch of the last two pipes to, you know, a modest 4 or 5% uh, so we don't have high velocities. It was just somebody thinking, oh, I have to tie into a structure. Mm -hmm. If it was a sewer, that might be one thing, but this mm -hmm. is all drainage, so we can tie into a higher, uh, two, three or four feet higher in the catch basin structure. So are you planning to, you're going to reduce it then from 16, 14 right. or 16%? It was, uh, yeah, I think one was like 13 now, okay. and one was all 14. Right. It'll be like 4 or 5%. Okay, well, as long as staff works with you to make sure that that's appropriate yeah thank you thanks for flagging that Robin and thanks thank for the response yep um, and we so otherwise I really don't have uh, anything else to add uh, I think everything's been pretty well addressed we touched on affordable housing touched on parking uh, we can't act on it tonight but I don't have any issue with the other um, the other item that, that mr. Anderson reviewed quickly for us and I didn't hear any other concerns either but certainly can work with staff um, between now and the next meeting to make sure that all that is all the eyes are dotted and t's are crossed on that um, and with that we do have a couple of different draft motions here again as staff indicated um, there's subdivision the applicant is seeking both subdivision approval and site plan approval um, I will start with a motion for uh, subdivision uh, aspect um, and everyone, I believe, does have copies of these draft motions. 
I move to approve the project titled Eastern Village Subdivision, proposed by Ballantyne Development, LLC, as depicted on the plan set prepared by Stantec Consulting Services, Inc., dated March 12, 2018, with the following findings and conditions. Findings as stated herein. Conditions, number one. Prior to the start of phase seven, the applicant is to meet with staff to identify that the requisite amount of affordable housing units have been or will be provided proportional to the number of units that are, that are approved for final development and construction. Number two, prior to the start of phase seven, the applicant is to conduct a traffic analysis to confirm traffic volumes to determine if any changes from the original assumptions have occurred and, if necessary, revise their traffic permit with Maine DOT and the town. And condition number three, prior to the release of a building permit for lot 118, the applicant is to dedicate $7,500 to the town towards safety improvements at the Eastern Road and Black Point Road intersection as described in the staff comments memo for the December 12, 2016 planning meeting. <coughs> second. We have a second, any discussion? All in favor? So to be unanimous for subdivision. And we also have a site plan motion, which is somewhat modified based on the discussion around parking. I move to approve the project titled South Village, proposed by Valentine Development, LLC, as depicted on the plan set prepared by Stantec Consulting Services, Inc., dated March 15, 2018, with the following findings and conditions. Findings as stated, uh, but we are striking the, um, I guess it's the second sentence of that second paragraph that, that speaks to um, allowing for parking under the ordinance requirement. Uh, conditions, number one, prior to the issuance of a building permit, the plan set shall be revised to include A, addition of landscaping between the parking lots and the proposed buildings, B, reduce the slope of SD16 from building D or verify that flow velocities can be kept at or below 10 feet per second. Uh, and then we're adding a C, which is the addition of 12 parking spaces. These revisions shall be reviewed and approved by the planning department. Condition number two, prior to the issuance of a building permit, the applicant shall pay the in lieu fee for the affordable housing units of $60,000. Number three, Prior to the issuance of a building permit, the applicant shall coordinate with the town's fire department in regards to the design of the proposed entrances onto Richards Way. Final design to be reviewed and approved by the planning department. And condition number four, prior to the start of construction, a pre-construction meeting is required. The meeting shall include the appropriate town staff, the developer, and their site contractor, and is to be coordinated through the planning department. Second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Thank you. 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 Item number seven, Scott and Teresa Giles request Shoreland Zoning Review for 12 Black Rock Road, Assessor's Map, R89, Lot 2. A staff intro for this one? Yep. So thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, so first of all, typically these type of applications that involve a non-performing structure typically require an advisory opinion from the planning board. However, the board has an official review authority for this application in accordance with the Shoreland Zoning Ordinance. Just as a note. So the applicant um, is located, the, this project is located at 12 Black Road in the RF and Shoreland Zoning District. Um, the applicant is proposing to replace their garage on the site. So the garage is a non-conforming structure because it does not meet the setback requirements on the site. In accordance with the Shoreland Zoning Ordinance, whenever a replacement of a non-conforming structure is proposed, the new structure must be placed such that the setback requirement is met to the greatest practical extent, extent as determined by the Planning Board. As you can see on the site plan provided, uh, there are multiple setbacks on the property, including a 75-foot setback from the wetland located north of the proposed garage. Uh, staff. Staff's only real comment is uh, just questioning if the garage could be rotated 90 degrees to the west 
to better comply with the side and rear setbacks on the site. I'll turn it back over to you. Thank, Thank you, you, Jamel, and I'll hand it over to the applicant. Thank you. I'm uh, Kevin Brown, Kevin Brown Architecture here, representing Scott and Tracy Giles um, on their property at 12 Black Rock. Um, as you can see, it is a very challenging site, zoning, um, dunes, FEMA flood zone. Um, we've, we've been working on the house, lifting the house out of the, the flood zone onto piers and doing what we need to on the house portion. Um, that's currently undergoing. We've got a zoning board uh, reduction for the, the front setback because there's a right of way for the property uh, that basically limits pretty much any movement of any of the structures or expansions on the site. So what we're proposing is to, to basically, you know, rebuild or renovate the garage, shrinking the footprint from the side property line to make it less nonconforming but really trying to keep it intact in the position it is to not disturb any other uh, soil outside of the area that is impervious currently. Um, there is an area in front of the, the garage. It's not, it's, we, we tried to define it a little bit further on our latest site plan, but this is really a stone gravel area here and the access to the front of the garage is really what we're trying to preserve. Um, you know, we, 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 in talking about the potential of <coughs> rotating at 90 degrees, there are some challenges um, with that. You know, it is going to have a long side to the back marsh, um, which is much this back in here. And beginning of March, there was, a, as you know, there was a, quite a big storm. And this, was, this these were, uh, some of the pictures had the water all the way up in front of, of, the, of the structure. So the goal with, with this renovation is really to, you know, lift the lift the garage up and put it on a, a, a deck, a wood deck, and lifting it up on posts. So currently it's an, on a, uh, a slab and cross wall. But really we're going to be removing that up and lifting it up so when the water does flow in, it, it can not damage the structure and flow underneath it. Um, but the goal is to try to preserve the, the, the orientation that we have currently. Um, like I said, we are, you know, we are rebuilding it, um, trying to improve the roof structure. The, as you can see, the old structure is very uh, dilapidated and hasn't been updated in many years. And so we're going to be adding a pitched roof to it and pulling in this wall, like I said, to basically take the volume for that and put it on top to make it less of a footprint. Um, I think overall, I think those are the, the key points I wanted to bring up. And we're looking just to basically keep the location where it is possible. Thank you. Yeah. Rick, how about we start with you this time? Yeah, <laughs> thanks. I don't know what forgets me. So if I understand this correctly, what you want to do is reduce the footprint but raise the structure? Right. Yeah, this is going to be kind of quick for me. <laughs> um, you know, on the surface, I can't see anything that's bad about that, and you're going to make it a much nicer looking structure, right? Sure. Um, and I don't see <coughs> Yeah, I wish I had more. I really don't. You can. I, think it's, I think it's a good we'll thing, have, so I'm going to We'll get more bites at the apple. We'll get more bites at the apple tonight. Okay. Okay, yeah. No, I think that's a good idea. So. Thanks. Rachel? Um, how high do you plan to, to raise the foundation? Um, it, I think we're talking probably 10 to 12 inches, just enough. To, we're still trying to get access up into, into it. You know, we're not required to lift it out of the, We're out of the VE zone at this point. The VE zone, the, um, you can see on the site plan, is pretty much the edge of the road. So you know, the house was required to be pulled up higher. But here, we're just doing it near because we know the water floods underneath there currently. So. We're thinking like 10 to 12 inches to the underside of the wood. So really, to the top of of the floor structure, it's probably two feet at the most. Have you taken a look at the projected sea level rise? I have. To no. give you a sense of no whether we, that's how long that's going to last. Right. No, we we haven't. But we, you know, I think. You know, right now, you know, originally we were going to replace the foundation. Um, in talking, we've talked with the EP about where the placement could be. And because of the fact that we, if we put a slab back in there, 
and a frost wall. We wouldn't be able to add any um, fill around that if we were to lift it up. So that's why we went the direction of putting it on piers to, to so you don't have to fill around the piers like you would a, a frost wall to bring up the grade to get it out of that. But we haven't, to answer your question, looked at the, the sea level rise. Yeah, I, I, I do like the uh, the proposed appearance of it. I think certainly it's a hundred percent improvement. <laughs> yeah. um, I'm I just. Um, since we know what's going, what's going on with the sea level rise, I just uh, you know under, hope you understand that it could be a very temporary solution. Mm -hmm. so, thank you. Thank you. That's all I have. Thanks, Robin. So I'm just curious about the process then. So you're going to get some kind of rigging company or something to actually lift it in place, then you're going to go down and jack the piers in somehow. Yeah, that's currently how the house has been. It's currently up on okay. piling or um, cribbing. Okay. So yeah. All right. So so there's going to be little to no. Um, I guess I'm just worried about the impact to the this wet area kind of right. a thing and erosion sedimentation control mm -hmm. and all the like. Um, are you coordinating with staff at all on the timing of this and erosion and sedimentation controls? Well, that's something that we will Good. Yeah, we will coordinate. Okay, yeah. and I believe the contractor should. You're in the shoreline zone, so mm -hmm. your contractor needs to be certified by DEP's NBS program. Okay. Um, so, just a couple of reminders that I'm sure staff is reminding you of. Um, also, echo what Rachel said about resiliency yeah. and the need to look at yeah. sea level rise just for long term value. Sure. Um, good idea with the peers. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Nick? I'm all set. Thank you. Roger? Um, basically, I'm all set too. I, I just think this project calls for a main cabin masters. Take care of this. <laughs> um, but um, I, I'm fine with it. Okay. Susan? <clears throat> the um, drawings of the ele the elevations. Where is the one? Oh, okay. It shows the east elevation, which is the back end of the. Um... Okay. I'm speechless. Um, I'm concerned about the. Sto the storage loft is going to be strictly big enough to, s to store in. You're not going to be turning that into another room. Oh, it's, it's, it's four feet tall. That's what I'm yeah. looking for. I think I think that's what it was. Yeah. Yeah. It's okay. pretty minimal. It's just enough to. We'll have like a library ladder in there and enough just to put storage. Um. My sense of it is that um, this is. This is going to get washed away no matter what you do. And we all, I mean, those of us who live here, watch it happen. You know, so we're going, to, we're going to save this rather pathetic little building to be destroyed in a future date and time. And we're going to put money into it in order to wait for the next disaster that comes along. I, I don't have any problems with that. I think we're getting a little less of an impact on the marsh. Mm -hmm. Basically, if I had my druthers, I'd leave it alone because it is non-conforming. It is in a wetland. It should have the opportunity to just die and be taken away as opposed to strengthening it. But the rising sea will do it for me, too. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Well, on that happy note. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Um, I mean, that certainly valid points about resiliency, but in terms of the, uh, you know, what's, what's in front of us here, I, I don't have any issues. I appreciate the explanation about uh, not wanting to rotate it and, um, you know, the other background that you provided, and I think, um, you know, we're meeting the first and basic test of a non-conforming use here, which is that you're not making it any more non-conforming, um, maybe a little bit less so. so um, with that, I will make a very simple motion. Um, based on a review of the Shoreland Zoning Standards, I move to approve the project titled 12 Black Rock Road, proposed by Scott and Therese Giles, as depicted on the plan set prepared by Kevin Brown Architecture, dated March 15, 2018. Second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor?
That's tremendous. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck. Um, at this point in the evening, I would like to have us take a very quick break. And uh, we'll be back at it here in four or five minutes and get through as much of this agenda as we can. Thank you. ask everyone to try to be as brief and economical as you can be um, while still covering all the bases and um, we'll see if we can get these off. Um, item number eight, uh, Maine Medical Center requests an amended site plan for 100 Campus Drive, Assessor's Map R76, Lot 6. Uh, do we have a staff intro for this? Yes. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, as you mentioned, it's a, this is a 4,050 4, square foot addition for oncology outpatient care uh, facility in the area at the southern end of the main building on the campus. Um, currently, the, that area is currently lawn and plantings. Uh, I will mention this is in the BR, BOR zone and uh, located at 100 Campus Drive. Uh, staff would like to note that Chapter 419, the Post-Construction Stormwater Infrastructure Management Ordinance, does not apply to the project because they are not proposing to disturb, they are proposing to disturb less than one acre. Um, the applicant has uh, requested for three waivers. Uh, staff has reviewed these requests and feels generally comfortable with these. Um, the board can review them, but staff feels comfortable with them. Uh, the traffic engineer for the town has suggested that a letter obtained from the main DOT confirming whether conditions from the original 1999 approval have been met uh, prior to final approval. And finally, um, in conversations with the Scarborough Sanitary District, um, they've expressed concerns about the existing sewer infrastructure on the site, and they will be re requiring the applicant to repair the infrastructure prior to their final approval. So I just wanted to note that. That's it. Thanks, Jamil. And I'll hand over to the applicant. Um, my name is Lonnie Michaud. I'm uh, here to represent Maine Medical Center. I'm a facilities project manager with them. Um, and basically, I'm just going to go through a few <coughs> points of reference real quick, quickly about um, why or the need for the expansion. Um, so basically, right now, we are um, uh, bursting at the seams. Um, so, you know, we're turning closets into offices or uh, record storage areas into offices just to um, to, to maintain staff and uh, so um, in the state of Maine last year there were 8,750 cancer patients, uh, new cancer patients um, and uh, the 100 campus location um, takes care of one third of, of those patients in the, in the entire state of Maine, one third of cancer patients in the entire state of Maine. Uh, so there's definitely a huge need for, for this expansion. Um, so one of the things that we're going to be doing is adding three positions um, and support staff. So it's going to be maybe 10, uh, 10 new positions, not, not going to be generating a whole lot of additional traffic. Um, so, um, so basically, you know, I, I was asked to, uh, to kind of point this out too, where uh, cancer treatment has changed in recent years, where um, it's treated as a chronic disease as opposed to um, end of life type. So, so folks are surviving longer uh, and living with cancer. Um, so we need to provide care for those, for those folks um, on a, on a long, long term basis now. I mean, that's how we have to kind of look at that. Um, so that's pretty much, you know, in, in a nutshell, the reason for this expansion mm -hmm. is just we, we, have to, we have to keep growing and uh, just to keep up with demand. And it's unfortunate, but that's how it is. Um, so I'm going to turn over to Mark Johnson with uh, SMRT. Uh, he's going to go over the logistics of, of uh, the site and uh, touch on a few points. Hi, good evening. Mark Johnson. I'm a landscape architect with SMRT Architects Engineers and acting as the agent for the applicant. Uh, tonight, and in the interest of brevity, I'll keep this real brief. 
Uh, this is uh, really a, a pretty uh, uh, low on the radar uh, kind of addition uh, for this for this large facility. Uh, 4,050 square feet, uh, again, <clears throat> in an area that is given currently to lawn um, on, the, on the south end of the of the existing building, uh, the existing existing parking that wraps around the back of, of uh, 100 campus, uh, existing sidewalk. Uh, this was a um, solarium that was put on in 2012, I believe, circus. So just to orient yourself to the building, and then there's an existing overhead canopy entrance that the addition is nestling in with um, at that corner. Nothing is being uh, modified from a circulation or a parking uh, standpoint. Uh, as you've seen in the traffic uh, report, traffic impact is minimal. Uh, report from Coral Palmer, uh, traffic engineering uh, for the project. By way of update, um, we have been in, in communication with Maine DOT relative to the standing traffic movement permit uh, for uh, for the site uh, circa 1999 uh, was was done then. Uh, Mr. Bray's comments, he, he mentioned uh, a review of conditions of that 1999 uh, approval. Uh, so uh, uh, Randy Dunton from Coral Palmer has uh, uh, pinged uh, the regional traffic engineer for Two things. Uh, one, a letter of concurrence with the Goral Palmer findings uh, that you have in your traffic report, and and two, uh, discussion about uh, these conditions. Um, the long and the short of it is that uh, he believes that uh, DOT will concur with the notion of once Main Med <coughs> on the Scarborough campus hits about a 75% occupancy level. That's when uh, these, these two, I believe, is remaining conditions of that 1999 approval would be, uh, would be assessed. So we are uh, just waiting for that letter of concurrence, and we'll get that to staff um, as, as soon as we get it. The um, other, other item that I would want to briefly touch on uh, was um, our work with Scarborough Sanitary uh, District. Uh, I've been in communication with um, Superintendent Hughes. Uh, we have an application in uh, and request to be on the agenda of the Board of Trustees. Next regular scheduled meeting, April 26th. Um, so we will be working with them towards approval uh, of, this, of this project. Um, as uh, was mentioned, there was there was some concerns on the part of the of the sanitary district uh, about some infiltration into the uh, sanitary line uh, that was observed in recent regular testing uh, that is that is done periodically uh, for the downstream effluent from the facility, and so we'll obviously be working with uh, with the district. Uh, towards resolution of those concerns. Um, the one final thing I would I would mention uh, relative to the project and is um, stormwater. Um, we've been approaching that in in two ways. Number one, to uh, satisfy obviously the town uh, requirements for stormwater treatment, and what we've done is is found an area. Uh, on the campus that is currently not treated to offset um, this area. And the reason for doing that was that this area, as you can see, is, is largely pretty hamstrung uh, in terms of available space. So the opportunities for treatment for stormwater uh, were minimal. Hence, finding an area which in your um, packet uh, is, is defined uh, near the 96 campus drive uh, facility and we've taken an equivalent area uh, and and uh, treated 
in, in that respect. That speaks to the town requirements for stormwater management. Uh, from a state uh, standpoint, this is a uh, site licensed uh, uh, site under the Maine Department of Environmental Protection. Uh, we have obtained uh, from them through uh, statute allowed exemption uh, for review uh, from, this, uh, from this property, Title 38 um, uh, does allow X amount of, of square footage for institutions over a certain <coughs> period of time before, uh, before uh, review is triggered. Uh, we were in communication months ago um, with uh, uh, Christine Woodruff, who's the project manager who's been working on this site for, for quite a few years and received um, uh, her approval. On that, on that request. I think that pretty much covers all the highlights uh, from my perspective, and I'd turn it over, Chair, to the board. Thank you. Um, I don't think we have anyone from the public here who wants to speak on this, but I'll put it out there anyway. Um, seeing none, uh, who wants to start off on this one on the board? I think Rick should start. I do too. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You're, you're the I got lots of questions. <laughs> so um, I think what I heard was the existing. There's, there, we're not increasing the parking lot at all. The existing parking lot will suffice for the new addition. Okay. Correct. All right. And then I looked at all your letters from the uh, water district and from the fire department. And they all said it looked good. Um, and that's just a grass and trees now there? That's what? Yeah, correct. You just, okay. okay. And that's what it's gonna look like? Yes, sir. Yes, I, I didn't go into any, any. On the bottom. Discussion. Oh, that's, <laughs> you know, that's fine. You don't, you yeah. don't, you don't have to. It's, it's basically matching <laughs> in with, uh, uh, Architectural styling and materials yeah. of the existing building. Great precast. Looks like a hospital building to me. So. Yep. That's all I have. All right. I'm good. It looks nice. Thanks, Rachel. Yeah, I, I guess the only little quibble I have, and I don't know what you can do about it, as I look at the map, probably nothing, is that um, you are adding more impervious surface, not a lot compared mm -hmm. to the whole building. Mm -hmm. uh, and to do that, you're taking out some of the landscaping. Um, and I was, at one point, was wondering if there was any place where you could um, replant what you were taking out so that it, there was, um, we were putting back more of the landscaping, more of the trees into, uh, into use. Um, and I don't know if there is such a place Maybe on the front buffer. Is it possible? Um, sure. I you know a. It, there there currently yeah it's uh, right now I think um, there are three existing conifers uh, back there, um, and grass. No, I think um, you actually have a little more according to this. Looks like. Yeah, I'm thinking of the winter shots right now. With a <laughs> yeah, no, I'm, yeah. I'm I'm looking at what so, you're taking out. It looks like mm -hmm. six, 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 uh, six plants. I, I would have to get out my magnifying glass to actually read what they are. Um, but it was just a you know it was a thought. Um, it's not a requirement. It would be a nice thing to do. Mm -hmm. Since you are adding to the impervious surface. And other than that, I have no questions. Thank you. Thanks. Robin? I, I would just echo what um, Rachel said as far as sort of having that net zero sort of impact um, to sort of try to get the um, pervious area, pr provide offset what was taken. Sorry, my brain shuts down at 9. Um, <laughs> The other question, the other two questions I have 
have to do with stormwater, but first I want to thank you for working with the town staff to sort of offset the stormwater impacts at a different place on campus. So first let me thank you there. Um, um, and then I, I guess I want to just ask uh, staff, is this located in the urbanized area? So this is part of the, the town's regulated stormwater system, correct? This part of town? It, it is in the urbanized area. However, the site law was um, approved prior to our post-construction ordinance. Is that what you're asking? No, um, I'm just wondering, so if the infiltration and inflow from the sewer department somehow cross connects with the stormwater, it's going to the town stormwater, so I don't, I the don't town believe water. there is a closed storm drain system behind okay. there. I think behind where the sewer is going, my understanding is back to Hillcrest. Is that in right. that direction? So right. okay. um, there might be some in their private system. They would have a storm drain okay. which would probably discharge to our MS4. Eventually. Yes. Okay. So I guess I would just reiterate the, the need to investigate that um, infiltration issue that the Scarborough Sanitary District um, picked up on and make sure that you, you just report back to staff on the investigation and the repair that's needed um, because it could impact the town's MS4 permit. Mm. So thank you. And I, I understand that um, section um, chapter is it 409 or 419 post construction? Yeah, it doesn't necessarily apply here, but I just want to encourage you to 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 do the annual requirements of the underdrain soil filters and and the like that you're putting in here. And so, does the main municipal camp? Uh, I'm sorry, the main medical center um, have a contractor on um, retainer already to. Um, inspect annually the stormwater features and if so can we add that to what you're doing to inspect it on an annual basis and, and again yeah <laughs> okay. and or you may you even do it yourself you yeah. know your facilities so. guy or something like that so and just as, as but a yeah point that's of, a natural addition yeah, yeah, yeah and yeah. just as, as a point of record just give provide a courtesy copy to the town would be great um, whenever you do those annual inspections, it just it puts a little feather in the town's cap, which is easy to, to do. So one hand washes the other. Um, other than that, I, I think this is uh, as, as sad as the need is for it. We're really lucky to have Maine um, Medical Center in, in our backyard, so thank you. Thanks. Nick? I don't have anything to add. All right. Roger? Uh, I don't have much to add either. I just want a clarification though. The addition is going right behind where that car is and that that right. Is that right? Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. I, I don't have anything else. Okay. Thanks. Susan? I'm fine. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, I don't really have anything to add either. Um, appreciate the discussion on, on uh, the uh, Sewer district and stormwater. Um, you know, architecture looks exactly like what's there now. Um, so that'll blend in. Um, you're not adding any parking, as, as previously noted. Um, appreciate the willingness to to look at um, you know, trying to net out the, the, the landscaping that will be foregone for this. So um, let's do it. And I appreciate the the efficient review. So with that, um, I will make a motion. I move to approve the project titled Outpatient Clinics Edition, proposed by Maine Medical Center as depicted on the plan set, prepared by SMRT architects and engineers, dated March 12, 2018, with the following findings, waivers, and conditions. Findings as stated, uh, following three waivers. Number one, given that the property is under the same ownership, since the original site plan approval in 1996, the waiver request for evidence of control of property in the site plan review ordinance is approved. Number two, given that the property is the same configuration as it was since the original approval in 1996, the waiver request for section 3.c.1 in the site plan review ordinance is approved. Number three, given that no signage is proposed for the project, the waiver request for a signage plan in the site plan review ordinance is approved. Conditions, number one, prior to the issuance of a building permit, the plan set shall be reviewed to include A, 
The total area directed to the new stormwater facility shall be delineated and labeled on a treatment plan. B, a label specifying the increase in, in impervious area as well as the total impervious area on the site on the grading and drainage plan. Condition number two, prior to the issuance of a building permit, the applicant shall obtain a letter from the main DOT that affirms the conditions stated in the 1999 site location permit have been fully satisfied and or are no longer a valid requirement of the site. This letter shall be reviewed and approved by the planning department. Number three, prior to the issuance of a building permit, the applicant shall submit approval by the Scarborough Sanitary District. Number four, prior to the issuance of a certificate of occupancy, the applicant shall make improvements to the sewer infrastructure as determined by the Scarborough Sanitary District. Number five, Prior to the start of construction, a pre-construction meeting is required. The meeting shall include appropriate town staff, the developer, and their site contractor, and is to be coordinated through the planning department. And an additional uh, condition number six, prior to the issuance of a building permit, the traffic impact fees shall be paid. Second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? <coughs> That's unanimous. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you very much. And I'm sorry, just clarification, my copy didn't have uh, number six. It's payment of the traffic impact fees. Yeah. And that was before? Building permit. Permit. Okay, thank you. Okay. And we'll type up the formal notices and get those sent out shortly. Yeah, thank you all very much. Right, thank you. Item number nine, Waterstone Properties Group, Inc. requests an amended site plan for lot seven, Scarborough Gallery subdivision, assessor's map, R37, lot 3307. Is this a, yep. is this a J? I'm gonna take this one where right. there's a, some history with this yeah. that uh, a few board members may recall. Um, so let's see, the site before the board uh, for consideration is actually what was considered a phase two or remaining land of uh, the building of Bob's and uh, Marshall's and Home Goods along Scarborough Gallery, um, <coughs> or Gallery Boulevard, I should say, in the Scarborough Gallery subdivision. Um, so as board members will recall, that the, the larger main building that was built was approved and this site was sort of left as remaining was a, considered a phase two that previously was being considered for two buildings. The applicant's now looking for one basically 8,200 square foot building um, with a couple of tenant spaces. Um, so just in, um, you know, so one of the main elements that staff identified in looking at the site plan is the building location doesn't meet the zoning ordinance requirement for a 50 foot setback. However, as board members may be familiar with lot one of this subdivision, which is where uh, Sweet Frogs and US Cellular are, um, that also doesn't meet setbacks. And how does this happen? Well, the ordinance allows for uh, reduction in setbacks through a plan development review process. And board members and, and maybe even the applicants have, who have been through those processes know that it can be sort of a, a, a very measured and, and deliberate review approach. However, one thing to keep in mind when the board reviewed that lot one, the overall Scarborough, uh, the, uh, the gallery subdivision was approved under the old economic overlay district standards, which was our precursor to our plan development review. So with the prior lot one, which got its lot reduction, staff was able to work with the board and the applicant to sort of refine the master plan or the plan development process. All this is staff's long-winded way of saying, we don't want to discourage the applicant from moving forward with the proposal because generally having buildings closer to the street and parking in the rear seems to be the direction most of our ordinance and zoning is headed. Um, but it does require that process. So before the board could take any action, any formal action, um, they would either have to meet the 50 foot setback or go through that process. So um, let's sort of set the stage with that. Um, so really I think tonight we can really consider this sort of more of an elevated sketch plan. Good opportunity for board members to raise any other issues that you might see uh, so the applicant uh, can be sure they're headed in the right direction. 
with that, I think you know, you'll have a sort of host of staff comments that you typically see. I don't think there were any that were, were too sort of uh, uh, too difficult to sort of work through, so I'm not going to belabor the points, but I did want to uh, turn it to Angela so she could speak just a little bit about stormwater approach and management um, given some of the other uh, discussions we've had in this neighborhood. So. With some previous applications, the board has seen and heard from abutters. Um, we talked about it during Curie Woods and came up Asian Fusion and even the brewery, uh, none such. That is the tributary that, that heads from this general watershed down to the none such. And um, with that, obviously, we heard about flooding and some erosion issues along that corridor. Um, this site was approved prior to our our chapter 419, the post construction ordinance. So there is no requirement um, for this applicant to do annual inspection follow up with the town to, to report to us. We're assuming that everybody's doing their inspections and maintenance, um, but they don't have to report to us that that's been done. So at this point, um, <coughs> knowing or hearing um, from other sites downstream that that there is a problem somewhere upstream, maybe additional flow is coming. It's an opportunity maybe for us to get in to this existing pond where this stormwater is directed to and maybe check up on the maintenance and inspection of that as well as looking at the outfall itself of this pond and just ensuring that maybe if there's any additional stabilization measures that maybe have to happen at that outfall or if there's, um, there's ways to like dissipate the energy that's coming out of there with the, with the amount of flow, um, there might be some some opportunity to, to kind of help with the downstream issues. Thanks. All right. And I'll hand it over to the applicant's representative. Okay. Uh, good evening. For the record, my name is Wayne Morrill from Jones Beach Engineers. With me tonight is Doug Richardson from Waterstone Retail and Eric Poulin from Jones Beach Engineers. <coughs> As Jay indicated, uh, this project was approved with two small pads out in front. One was a 22,048 square foot retail space, and the other one was a 4,872 square foot high turnover sit down restaurant. Um, back in 2016, this project came back, um, went through some staff review on just a retail standalone building that subsequently did not move forward. Uh, we are here tonight, um, as Jay said, with a 8,242 square foot building. Um, 50 parking spaces, the driveway curb cuts going into this um, this retail building are existing. So right now we have the existing road coming off the Gallery Boulevard, comes in, both of these driveway cuts are there, the sidewalks along Gallery Boulevard have all been established, and then the landscaping that goes completely around this phase two has been installed with the exception of the landscape around the pylon sign at, down at the corner. Um, part of the site, um, we do have all the existing drainage that is part of the entire development was came to the site and pub pipes were stubbed into this area. So up in the northeast corner, we do have a depression that's in the ground right now that's actually receiving some of that grant that uh, stormwater, bringing into the um, the bioretention cells on that easterly side, and then this drainage into what would be the westerly side of this lot that goes down into the large pond. Um, we do, uh, Waterstone does have a company that is doing a stormwater uh, compliance. They do um, after big storm events. Um, uh, I think they actually do a monthly um, review of that. Uh, we'd be more than welcome to share that with the town so that they can see what we've been uh, keeping track of for our maintenance of those ponds. So. Um, with utilities, uh, we are working uh, with the uh, sanitary district. Uh, we are going to be taking, we have water that's stubbed towards this building on, uh, on the Galilee Boulevard. And then we also have the sewer that's over on that side too. But we're continuing the work with um, the uh, sanitary district. With this development, there is a reduction in impervious of, from the original approved of 18,000 500 square feet of impervious. So we have a huge reduction in that impervious. Also, from going for the two uses that was approved, we have a reduction. Uh, you have a memo in your 
your packet from Vanessa Associates that talks about that uh, we have a reduction of 44 trips in the peak hour on the weekday and a 22 trip reduction on Saturday peak hours. Um, Lighten um, is gonna be consistent with the rest of the center. There, it's an ornamental LED full cutoff light. So we're gonna be carrying that same lighting into this front um, pad. And then the landscape itself, um, we are gonna be, um, the original landscape that was for this area, we used a lot of the same trees and shrubs that was on the original approval. So it'd be conducive with the rest of the landscape around the site that currently exists. Um, that's pretty much it. Um, the, I, the one last thing I wanna mention is the original buildings that were approved. Um, the building, the restaurant, and the, um, the retail space. Uh, the retail space was 15 feet away from the property line, and the old uh, restaurant was 18, uh, 17 feet away from the property line. We're showing our building 18 feet away. So our building's further away from the property line than what was originally approved for the site. And then we did um, do an architectural rendering that is part of our submission, so the board can see what that's going to look like from uh, Gallery Boulevard. So one of the things that was requested that we actually have glass that was actually facing out towards the boulevard. So what you're looking at is the back of the, the building on this uh, elevation here. So I'll open it up to the board for any questions. Thank you. Mr. Chair, just for a quick point of clarification, just to be clear, staff's recollection and looking back into the history that we, the board never actually approved the phase two development, it was part of the original package, but then it was sort of pulled off and left sort of with things being stubbed into it, the curb cuts. And so the board never actually approved any building sites or building plans for the site. So so I just want to be clear, because I would agree, had the board previously approved buildings 18 feet or 13 feet from the road, that we would have dealt with the plan development process already. So I just, just a point of clarity. Um, so that's staff's recollection of it anyway. Good. Pretty sure that's correct. So, so, uh, so given that, I could ask the, ask the applicant, um, what is your inclination with regard to the plan development review and, and, and approaching that as it pertains to the setbacks? Well, I, I think so, that the... So it's like a kind of a basic threshold question yeah. right now. You can come on, come on up and introduce yourself. Thank you. Doug Richardson, I'm Vice President of Development for Waterstone. I've been with the company for over 11 years, so I've worked on this project from its infancy. Um, I recall that we had the entire project uh, reviewed and approved by the Planning Board, and after said approval, uh, we held back on the construction of the second phase, which was the restaurant of 2,000 square feet. Uh, we came back. Uh, about a year ago, because uh, we had some leasing activity, um, that leasing activity uh, fell apart. Um, we now have three tenants to occupy this building. Um, none of them are food use, one's mattress store, uh, personal training, and a nail salon. So uh, that's what we're looking for right now is uh, approval of the modification of the two buildings to this one scheme. Uh, in fact, in our last review, the one thing that was outstanding was the rendering which we produced for this meeting here. Thank you. Thank you. I'm guessing we don't have any public comment, but I'll put it out there anyway. All right, seeing none, we can go back to the board. Robin? Yeah. So I remember this coming in front of the board about a year ago, too, and I one of the comments that I had made is, we got to do some analysis to make sure that the whatever the whatever stormwater management is there. It looks like a series of ten bioretention cells um, is functioning and can um, properly attenuate the the, the um, quantity and, and quality requirements there. Um, and and yeah, it sort of died on the vine, I guess, um, or that's my recollection as well. Um, and it was, I remember it was St. Clair Associates, and I remember specifically asking them to come back. And, and I get that some of the stormwater has already been stubbed in place kind of a thing. Um, but I think, I think we're still dealing with some 
threshold issues, as Corey put it, um, with respect to stormwater. Um, so that's that's what I'm here to harp on. <laughs> um, I will I will hand it over to my colleagues to talk about setbacks and their recollection of that. Okay. I, I have a feeling that staff is doing a little bit of uh, a little bit of forensics on that right now. Um, Rachel. I have no recollection of this, so I'm <laughs> <laughs> well, you might not. So I, I guess the, the, the problem I've had in looking at all of these plans is I simply cannot visually place this development, this proposed building, within the whole, within the whole project. So this was the original approved, the bones on the back. And then out on the front is a large gravel area that's been all stabilized out on the front. But where is it in, in relationship in, in the whole development of Gallery Place? That's, that's what I'm having difficulty with. I mean, I've traveled down there and I'm still trying to figure out where it is. Right, right, across, right, right across from Texas Road. Right, yeah. Yeah. Those buildings are behind it. Left and east of Walmart. Yeah. Okay, I'm also directionally challenged. I'm not sure which it's east is. across from is. like Texas Roadhouse and, and uh, in front of Robbins. Robbins. It's where the big okay. concrete uh, sewer thing was. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The box is there. There's a pet store. And home okay, I guess. Yeah, yeah it's home right. goods is in there. Go past Walmart and keep on trucking. <laughs> yeah, um, I don't have any. I, I'm sure I will have comments later. I don't have any right now. Okay. Thank you. Rick? Yeah, I, I just want Robin and staff to be satisfied with the <laughs> storm water and, um, the, and then have the applicant go through whatever process, if, if they need to go through that process to determine. To, I'm okay with the setback if as long as staff is, but whatever that due process is to get there, okay. just to make sure that everybody you know, we, everybody has to do the same paperwork. Thanks. Nick? So, yeah, not a whole lot um, you can hear from me on this, except for uh, I'm okay with the setback. I find it interesting, though, that um, I, I wasn't here for the start of this whole development when it first, you know, the, the gallery went in. But I think it's, I'm thinking I'm on my fifth year now. So I've seen a couple of, a couple of things happen in there. But to, to take it from um, where it was to where it's going, it reminds me of the malls that are just littered around Massachusetts. And, it, and I, I find it, you know, it, they all look like that. Um, so I have no problem with the architecture. I just never in my mind, I find it, I'm, I'm smiling a little because I've never thought of Scarborough, Maine to be that busy Massachusetts type of town. And, to have one of these strip malls kind of develop in front of your eyes is kind of amusing to an extent. Um, I'm okay with the setback. The, you know, there's, I, I know there's a process uh, that you're gonna have to go through, but y you'll make it, um, most applicants do. Um, there's really little else here to, to talk about. Um, I'm, I did like your original proposal, and I understand the market's changed on you um, with the two separate buildings. I thought that was, that had a little bit more dimension than just a strip mall feel to it. But it is what it is. It's what the market is. And uh, as soon as you iron out the four pages of notes from staff, I'm sure we'll have you back. Yep. Thanks. <coughs> Thanks. Uh, just to uh, counter Nick a little bit, I, I actually like the rendering. <laughs> I, think, I think it fits in well at, for that whole development. Um, I, I just have a question. Uh, uh, Waterstone, so basically you, your company controls like Bob's and that whole section in, and Walmart has the other side, is that correct? Um, KGI owns the overall uh, Lowe's and Texas Roadhouse and Walmart. We just own the parcel that consists of the Marshalls, Home Goods, Bob's, Pet Smart. Okay, and what about the other parcel that's um, adjacent to Muzzy Road? No. It's, it's just oh, oh, oh. Um, that's yeah, that's a conservation. <clears throat> it's the same lot, but there's a conservation easement there. That's under your control? Though? Yes, it is. It's okay. under our control. And that's indeed it is conservation. I was, just getting about, I was just getting to that whole you know, um, residue of um, stormwater and everything that's going down on Muzzy Road. I don't know how we, how we deal with that. So, And I'm not sure what this plan, 
development review process. What's that involved, Jay? Uh, well, it's the full process is similar to what we're going through with the Downs project right now, where you sort of do a site inventory and then a master plan before developing the site plan itself. But as I said, with lot one, um, you know, staff can do some digging back in the file, but the previous lot, the board felt comfortable doing a, a, a very modified approach, again, given that the prior economic overlay district sort of governed. So <coughs> I think it would, be, it would be somewhere in between what the board typically sees with the master plan and maybe slightly elevated from a typical site plan um, process. So um, I don't know if I've answered your question. Well, is this a, a very time-consuming <coughs> process? I think it could be done probably in one meeting. I, I guess I would leave it up to the town engineer, our esteemed town engineer. Well, if you're asking about the, the stormwater piece and what you can do, I think that's very helpful if they have monthly inspections. Yeah. And also, I tried to put in staff comments specifics on what would be helpful for staff to kind of look at, so giving them some direction to say, these are the, I think, the elements that would be helpful to see, and we can look at what what's what's the flow out of that pond. and. Um, and I'm fully aware, you know, they have an approved permit. And so I'm not looking to change that. I'm just wanting to make sure that where the outfall is and that that's stabilized and that that's functioning, even not just the pond is functioning, but the outfall is in a way that's not negatively impacting the downstream. Okay. So would, would this be the, if this is approved, would this be the last piece to be developed on this whole Scarborough Gallery? For, for our parcel, yes. I don't know if there's other lots in Scarborough Gallery. I think this may be the last of the known sort of development. Mm -hmm. Who knows if one of these other large parking lots ever decides to do <laughs> something else with all that pavement area they have. But Okay, I, I guess I have nothing for that. Thanks. Susan? It is what it is. <laughs> I have no problems with it. I, I do think that we've talked enough about what the um, complications might be that staff is going to be watching very closely, as, especially the stormwater and so on. And I feel comfortable with that. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, um, I really don't have much to add. Um, I, think I'm, I think I'm on the same wavelength as my colleagues in feeling that the, the uh, reducing the, the Reduced setback um, is fine on the merits, as as Jay noted. It's generally consistent with what we try to encourage now in terms of getting buildings a little closer to the to the street. Um, and along those lines, we do appreciate having the you know having the, the building uh, open out with some some glass uh, to the street. Um, also appreciate the willingness to share the the, the uh, stormwater data, and, and that'll be helpful uh, to the town. Looking at that, and um, beyond that, um, as um, Angela noted, there's some some feedback on in terms of some technical items, and um, we will let uh, staff and the applicants sort of work through the, the setback question and what, if anything, special needs to happen beyond that. But I, I think that uh, based on what seems to be a willingness to to, to get to where you want to be. Um, and the fact that we can take a take a condensed approach it shouldn't be too onerous if we go in that direction. So, um, with that, I think um, that pretty much does it for this evening. Okay. Unless you have any other questions for us, we'll, we'll be okay. meeting next week. So, all right, we'll address those. Okay. Thank you. Thanks for waiting. Speaking of waiting, <laughs> we did it. We made it to number ten. Dunstan Properties LLC requests a site plan review for 4 Stewart Drive, Building B, Dunstan Village, Assessor's Map U30, Lot 16. That's history, but Jamel still gets it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Get away. So, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, this proposed developments in the TBC Zoning District, located at 707 US Route 1. Um, the applicant's proposing Building B on uh, the approved master plan for the Dunstan Village. It's a 
2,776 square foot building proposed for a hair salon and a property management office. Uh, staff did notice that there are several missing submission requirements in the application, including uh, applicable zoning information, space and bulk, uh, landscaping details, and a lighting plan. Um, the board may remember as part of the master plan approval process uh, that improvements along Route 1, including a left-hand turn lane, will need to be provided after a certain number of vehicle trips is reached for the development. Prior to this project, there were a total of seven trips available. Prior to the requirement of the Route 1 improvements, uh, the applicant has indicated that the project will result in a total of four trips, leaving three left prior to the required Route 1 improvements. Um, the applicant's proposing 50 parking spaces. Uh, 11 are required per the zoning ordinance, so the board should should ask the applicant if the extra spaces are proposed for other buildings on the site. Uh, buffering to abutting, abutting properties will be very important for this development as it moves forward. Uh, there's some residential properties located to the west of the development. Um, and finally, the limit of work designation should be included on the plans going forward to help staff better understand the proposed scope of work um, for this specific project and other buildings going forward. That's all I have for now. Thanks, Jamel. And the floor back to Mr. Frank. Thank you, Mr. I think I'll leave that alone. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Sean Frank, Mr. Bagel Techniques. Uh, with me is uh, Elliot Chamberlain. Uh, a couple of folks you're probably not too familiar with. Uh, there we go. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'll, I'll try not to touch anything from here on in. Uh, as Jamal stated, uh, what we're looking at is this building right here, Building B, uh, with the improved master plan uh, for the uh, Dunson Village neighborhood. Uh, as this board may recall, uh, the table and tap is actually under construction right now. Uh, they actually should be putting the siding on here shortly, and a lot of the work in Perry has been done. The residential, as you may recall, has also been approved as an individual site plan. Uh, and again, that's under construction now. Uh, obviously, from our standpoint, we're always trying to just look at, if you will, what makes the most sense from a development standpoint. Uh, so what we've included is the parking associated with the building itself, as well as the building. The building has actually changed a little bit in terms of height size. Uh, the original was like 70 feet long and 30 feet wide. It's now 60 feet long and 45 feet wide. Again, obviously, you can take it from a master plan, if you will, just trying to uh, uh, make it work for specific tenants. Uh, the idea is half of it's going to be uh, some office space, uh, and the other half is going to be for a, a hair salon area. Uh, again, in accordance with the master plan, uh, what you can see is that this portion of the roadway, uh, the driveway access, if you will, has been installed already. Uh, what we do is come off from that and we are proposing basically to just square that whole thing off and build all of the parking associated with that. Uh, basically more from a drainage perspective. We have a catch basin proposed here, a catch basin proposed here, and another one proposed here that ties into an existing catch basin in this location here. So just to make that drainage work, it just seemed to make sense to, uh, to install the parking lots that are there. Obviously, again, in accordance with the master plan, you know, a lot of that parking would be utilized hopefully for some future buildings that are going to be constructed uh, up along Route 1. Uh, the access, uh, and again, I'm, we're not going to build it now. We'd be happy to show it in some fashion, whether it's a dash line or something along those lines. Uh, will be at some point it's installed through here. Uh, Jamel did have a good point. I am showing this as 18 feet. I don't know why, but it was shown on the master plan as 18 feet, but certainly we will widen that out. I have maintained uh, 24 feet in terms of the widths of the uh, drive aisles, just because that's been consistent throughout with the master plan associated with that. Uh, I do have to add the, uh, the zoning. I just missed that. Uh, but obviously, it's the exact same thing that's been on the last three site plans that we've had associated with this. From a landscaping standpoint, uh, again, our intent was to specifically add exactly what had been proposed as part of the master plan. Uh, I didn't have as much along the building, and again, I'd be happy to work with staff on that if that makes sense, uh, to add that landscaping because we don't have uh, the room we had because of the wider building. Uh, obviously, we don't have the, as, as much landscaping room between the sidewalk and the building itself. Uh, from a lighting perspective, we went exactly with uh, the lighting that had been part of the master plan. Uh, which did have a, a photometric associated with it. So again, we just followed that uh, verbatim. 
Um, and Elliot did have a um, proposed building that he'll talk about just a little bit. As you may recall from the, the drainage standpoint, uh, the ponds were all installed uh, and they are uh, up and functioning. Uh, and we also had within the uh, landscaped areas here um, some uh, field inlets, the perforated drain pipes, uh, with the roof drains connected to them uh, to allow some repercolation, if you will, uh, to the groundwater for the roof uh, runoff as well as for the, uh, the landscaped uh, areas. Uh, again, Elliot also had a, a proposed building, and Elliot, I don't know if you just want to talk about the building just a little bit. Yes, as, as Jamal said, it's, it's about 2,700 square foot building. Uh, it's, it's literally cut right down the middle. Half of it is a property management company or an office. Half of it's going to be a hair salon. Um, single story building on slab. One of the comments was about any HVAC units. This is going to be set up with uh, under slab radiant heating, which will all be, all that equipment will be inside. There will be a mini split system for AC, uh, which most of you are probably familiar with, the outside box is about the size of a large suitcase, if you will, hung on the back side of the building. So, uh, hidden very well. Um, so nothing, nothing large will be seen like we had at the restaurant. We, we had to fence that in. Um, again, single story. Uh, wall heights around 12 feet, roof heights around uh, 16, so the way the town measures the roof, we meet that. Um, but I still think it's a crazy 20 foot rule for a single story building, uh, but we meet that rule. Um, you can see a lot of glass down the front in each side of the building. Um, this building will be mostly white uh, with uh, black doors on the front, some blue awnings, uh, lights on the front side of the building. Um, Besides that, fairly simple structure. So if there's anything about else besides the building itself, any questions? Do you have anything else you want to go uh, Just real quick, uh, signage will only be uh, uh, you know, on the building itself, correct? Yeah, one, one of the things we have decided for Dunstan Village is we talked about doing a, a pylon sign with everybody's name on it. We've kind of backed off that, so now the front sign is either going to uh, just say Dunstan Village or Dunstan Crossing or the villages at the village at Dunstan Crossing. Um, we've decided not to do every business name on the front sign, so much more decorative, uh, a lot less verbiage. So each building will end up having uh, signage that will fall within the town ordinance for signage on a building. Mm. Thanks. And again, we do know traffic. Uh, we have actually been out there surveying, uh, so obviously the intent is to pull the, together the uh, uh, the actual design plans associated with the left turn lane in accordance with the uh, the TMP. As as, as the uh, memo stated, there were a couple of trips, like seven trips that were left. This is a very low use uh, uh, building, uh, so we could still be under the old one, if you will, while we're going through uh, and uh, finalizing the design plans associated with that left turn lane. So, uh, with that, Mr. Chairman, uh, we'll conclude our presentation. So, I'll be happy to answer any questions the board has. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anything? I don't really have a whole lot here. It's a nice look. I think it's a nice clean looking building. And I like all the glass features to it. So. Uh, I'm okay with the 50 extra parking spots, knowing that there's a longer term plan here, and it's clearly not for the salon, or it's the best salon ever, one or the other. So, uh, yeah, good luck. Thank you. Roger. Um, I don't really have uh, too much to add either. I, you know, I think, um, I guess the parking was the, the only question I had. I, I assume that's be, you're going to use that for the restaurant and and in building C and D also, right? It's dangerous. Um, yeah, what had happened was when we've got the extra spots because behind this area, this is going to serve what hopefully will be two more buildings right along Route 1. So it's, it's the parking. I don't know what those buildings are going to be, but you, you kind of had to pick a cutoff spot. And it, it was really, we didn't want to build half a parking lot and have a dead end aisle. So to get the circulation and to have a good cutoff spot. Technically, you know, maybe we could have left off this one row, a few spots here, um, but it was really just kind of picking a spot as to where to stop and, you know, to make it all work today and along with the drainage that Sean's trying to create. So it kind of brings us up to that curb line and then everything behind the curb line from there to Route 1, hopefully in the next few years will be two more buildings. 
Are we, are we supposed to make a comment about the um, Route 1? Or are we basically satisfied with they don't have to do anything at this point? Um, I think that was, staff can jump in, but I, my, my understanding of it was that was really just to sort of high, to flag that, that yeah, we're okay. approaching that, that, that trigger. Okay. Yeah. I think we also want to flag that as part of the, I think it was the table and tap approval, or maybe it was a subdivision. I don't remember which one it was, but the board did have a condition of approval that said prior to any of these other buildings getting underway, the left turn lane need to be established. That was because at that time we didn't know they wouldn't be triggering that mm -hmm. that traffic movement. So I think as part of this process, if the board's comfortable, um, staff would draft a condition that modifies that previous one, recognizing that they still have capacity under which they haven't triggered the need for the left hand turn yet. So. Uh, okay, I'm all set. Thanks. Susan. That was my only question. So thank you. Okay. Thank you. Robin. I'm all set. Okay. Rachel? Uh, to me, it makes a lot of sense to anticipate those two buildings along uh, Route 1 by putting in the parking now. So, as I said, it makes a lot of sense to do it that way. May I? I'm not even going to wait for him to ask. Yeah. I'm all set, too. <laughs> 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 Mr. Chair. All right. Thank Corey, you have a. Uh... <laughs> Susan. Just because I. Want it known that I can say pleasant things and nice things to nice people. <laughs> There's no You're talking to me, sir. <laughs> no, 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 I know when somebody out there is watching. I go to Hannaford Brothers and somebody in Italy comes up to me and says something about the planning board and I say, you watch that? <laughs> they say, oh yes. I said, well, you've got to get a life. Mm -hmm. But in the meantime, we did it again. You know, I mean, the groundwork that we that we all did back when is paying off. You know, it, it, sometimes it just seems like I just can't possibly go through any more of this, but it worked because here we go. This kind of slides in. And it's wonderful to see that part of Route One becoming alive. A, a restaurant, yay! Yes. You know, a salon, wow! You know, that's really exciting to me. So, good news. Um, the only thing I would, might suggest, uh, Mr. Chair, before you have your final comments, and it sounds like the board is generally comfortable with the direction <coughs> everything's headed, um, that there's still some details to be ironed out. That if you know the board's comfortable putting this on a consent item the next time around, what might be a way of considering that way the plans can just get sort of reconciled. We can know the details of building materials, have the sort of core side of architecture, and sort of put put a bow on all the yeah. all the outstanding details. And, but I just sort yeah. of offer I that think as a that seems appropriate to me, and I, it seems like people are kind of nodding. Mm -hmm. So um, I, yeah, it's really at this point just some some cleanup and, and follow through on things and. Shouldn't be too much heavy lifting. I guess that's easy for me to say, but <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think that would be that would be a reasonable expectation or consent item for next time. You all set? All right, I think so. Well, thank you very much. Right. Appreciate you seeing the 1032. Of us. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, is there anybody else? Good job. Squeeze one more in here. We have a. Planning staff report? Uh, yep, a couple of quick things. Um, just a reminder that we do have another meeting on Thursday night, uh, the follow up master plan discussion with the folks from the Downs. So we'll start that at 7 o'clock. And um, oh, yeah. we are doing that in chambers, if I remember correctly. School board meets on Thursday night, yeah. Are we at the library? Well, we got Anyone list. remember? Uh, can you look up our agenda, see where we're located? It doesn't say on there. I looked at it. We got something in the name. We'll, uh, to be determined. Yeah. It's no, well, it it's should be set. We, we look into care. So I'll, I'll go touch on my other items and <laughs> circle back to them. Okay. Thank you for asking. Um, so obviously, folks probably know at this point, the Verizon Tower balloon test did not occur. Um, too much wind. We've heard, yes, due to wind, it was a weather related. Uh, we have heard from them. They're giving other considerations, so we'll certainly keep folks updated. Staff did our best to inform the public by putting it on the town's website. We'll try to do that again as well. But again, this is Verizon's test for their impact 
uh, visual impact analysis. So um, we will do our best to keep folks informed, and we uh, are still receiving uh, letters from the public on that item. Um, there was, it did come up earlier about update on the affordable housing and what the town's doing within lieu fees. So just quickly, the Housing Alliance has actually put together an RFP that they've put out sort of on the street um, to uh, folks who do development in the affordable housing world to tell them that there's funds available and there's a process by which they can submit applications yes. with uh, selection criteria established. So um, there is movement afoot. Uh, and separate from what the town's doing, Avesta is moving forward with their project at the Southgate House. Um, so that's going to be another, I can't remember how many, 36, 38 units 38. Yeah. Um, on the marketplace. So that there are there are some things happening. So staff will certainly keep folks abreast as, you know, as the Housing Alliance Council make decisions on what to do with those and the fees. We'll keep you up to date on those. Can I ask a question regarding that? How, how do we stand? Um, for the dollar amount in lieu of compared to other communities. I know Portland's pretty high, but what about other communities around here? Are we in line with them, in other words? Um, where we put, I, I don't know how we are in line with other communities. I'm not frankly sure how many other communities have an in lieu fee. Um, where we established our fee was for, we had a, a set amount that you could do if you wanted to do a, a, a transfer development rights. So years ago, the town established that about $20,000 per unit was right for our transfer development rights in lieu fee. Um, and so when the town was developing the affordable housing fee, it was clear if we made it lower, everyone would utilize affordable housing. If we made it higher, everyone would utilize uh, the transfer development fee. So that fee was really established to be the same. Um, but certainly, you know, it's been a while since that number has been um, established, so you know the potential to take a second look at that is is out there as time allows. I have a quick question on a project. I'm wondering if we can get an update on the um, Patriot Acura contract zoning. Um, I know there was some follow up as far as you know the applicant looking into helping out with a flood mitigation sort of capital improvement plan. Are they have they been working with staff and moving forward on that at all? I haven't had any conversations with them at this point. I'm not okay. sure if the town manager or council has. Okay. Um, sort of the next thing the planning board will see is going to be really just the site plan elements. Mm -hmm. um, the contract zone language will be there, and it'll be certainly something the board can weigh in on through that process. That's yeah. That, that, was, that was sort of my request too, is to see the the second draft of that sort of agreement that has the, the public benefit specifically yeah. specified in there. So. Yeah. so that's part of what they need to see Great. when they come forward okay. so we know sort of Sounds what's good. changing in the zone. <laughs> yeah, it's a good question. It's a unique process because, and it, we're, we don't, it doesn't come up very much mm -hmm. anymore, the way it kind of toggles between the planning board and the council and back again. Mm -hmm. and So, um, you know, maybe suggest everyone kind of keep an eye out for the council agenda as well when they Next time they have it on their on their agenda, okay. um, I don't think we have an administrative amendment report, do we? We do not, though we have one. I think at least one other staff. <laughs> 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 I don't like it. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. um, I just wanted to give everyone. I'm giving all the boards that I talk to a heads up that uh, Gorham Road, uh, the construction that Unitil is doing, is starting next week, and so it will be. Um, off and on, one way, tra one lane traffic, two lane traffic. They'll try to keep it moving as best they can. But obviously, you've seen signs up about seat alternate routes. That work will happen um, from starting next week through July. And then <laughs> in July, um, the town will begin our complete streets project on Warren Road. That's where we're trying to get units a lot of the way so we can do our work. Um, and hopefully, probably. Towards the end of the summer, we'll be doing our, our big box culvert work, which again will tie up some traffic and, and maybe then give a little break until the spring when we kind of finish up that project. But I'm really excited about that project with the, the multi use path um, that'll be connecting the schools down to Maple, and, and um, I think it'll be a, a big difference for that corridor. So just happy to have everyone have a little patience through the next months. Wonderful. <laughs> Finally. Thanks. Thank you.
I just went off to grab our notification that was posted in town hall about the April 5th meeting. And it does say we're meeting in town hall. So plan to come here unless you hear otherwise. All right. Thank you. So no administrative amendment report. Any planning board correspondence beyond what we all got regarding the Black Point, uh, sorry, Group 1 project? Mm -hmm. Um, as Jay mentioned, I've been hearing that staff is continuing to receive a steady stream of letters and emails about the Verizon Tower. Um, so I'm sure at some point we'll, we'll all get up to speed on that. And that makes the next step. Uh, any planning board comments? Uh, Corey, I just have a question. Can you remind me who's our, who's our delegate to what committees each person covers here? And who's our transportation? Committee That's person? Roger. Okay, Roger. Okay, and then there's our long range planning folks. Okay. Susan and I are on long range planning. Okay. All right. Are there other committees? Just having updates from those I, would be good. Yeah. Rachel, you're on the conservation I'm, I'm on conservation, which uh, occasionally meets at the same time. Yeah. So I've been juggling that a little bit. Okay. I believe. Um, some folks from conservation may be at the hearing uh, on Wednesday. I mean, excuse me, Thursday. Okay. Good. That's a good question. Um, my quick comment is uh, I will not be here for Thursday night's um, meeting, but look forward to hearing how that goes. Um, and uh, thanks to everyone for hanging in there. I'm glad we got through the whole full agenda. Mm -hmm. we'll, we'll let you know where we meet, okay? Yeah. <laughs> um, and with that, I will uh, move to adjourn. Second. All in favor. Thank you. Thank you.